cheers to episode 148. I'm pretty sure. We should bring that over here. Come on, the toots. 148. I got coffee because I got a brain fog. I got water because I've been drinking for eight days. I'm drinking a natural light. Oh, the OG can too. That's yeah. nice can. Sexy. Nice can. <laughs> nice cans. I gotta make sure this is 148. It feels yep, wrong. 148. It is. The last one was 147. Um, welcome in to the number one sports podcast in the state of Michigan, the all around sports podcast. Not just one sport, not just one team. We touch on everything. It's Tuesday. It's January 2nd. It's 2024. Happy New Year. Let me be the first to tell you Happy New Year on January 2nd. 7.46 p.m. Eastern, 6.46 Central, which that means Alex is back if you're listening. We only say Central if Alex is back. And Hey, Alex. Welcome back. Welcome back, Alex. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And guys, I think the theme of this show for me is I think, I think I've hit my peak of sports fandom when it comes to football. I think... It might be the pinnacle. Nothing, nothing can top that. The setting, the location, the team that you face, I don't think anything can top that. I was talking about the fancy football championship. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but oh. that added to it. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Grant, did you good. work today? Good. No, good. I, have, I had today off. I go in tomorrow. Oh my gosh, I'm so lucky. No, you are so lucky. I'm jealous. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> I'm not lucky at all. I am so lucky. I'm well, so I was thinking that I was you like, got work off. Great, you flew I, in like light, late last night, basically this morning. Late. My dad went into work. What a warrior. Crazy. Larry the Legend. What'd you do all day? Classic. You didn't do I shit didn't, today. I didn't get to Rochester until 2 p.m. And then I slept because I think I had like 2 3 p.m.? Yeah. What time did you leave there? I left my parents' house at like 12. No, 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 no. What time did you leave Los Angeles? Midnight after the game. You got to Tecumseh. Landed in Ch- landed or in Chicago. Sylvania? No, they haven't moved Tecumseh. yet. Landed in Chicago at six a.m. Layover for about an hour and a half. Flight left six a.m. So landed because it's over. So it was a red eye, and you lose time because you're adding two hours to Central time. So it was only a three and a half hour flight, but you have to add two hours onto the time where you that land. Is yeah, and then you land, and then you're sitting there. I got. A sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin. I'm basically in the recap point now. I sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin at 6 a.m. and a hash brown. I just sat there half awake and then got on the flight to Michigan, landed in Detroit at like 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m. Because you lose another hour because you're going Eastern time now. You're just basically reversing what you did on the way out. You're just losing time. Time is being sucked from you when you're in this little tube in the air. And then ass. I carpool to my i drove to my parents house so we had to go to tecumseh and then i got there packed up my rest of my things i had left behind and then drove to rochester so i reversed the route home from so you the haven't slept still i slept for two hours in my own bed and i slept on the all the flights but added up it's probably like four and a half hours of bad sleep on planes maybe i'm gonna sleep good tonight I feel good. Though. You are not I'm, getting up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. No, I'm no. waking up at 7. I think it's going to hit you tomorrow, Grant. I think it's always the I think next day after. You're going to feel like shit tomorrow. But I got an espresso for Christmas, so I uh, will be welcome. mainlining that into oh. my pants. You know how to talk dirty. Wow. It's the best gift I think I've ever gotten. I'm obsessed with uh Dude, just you ever notice coffee. how much you just copy me? Everyone has. <laughs> a lot of people have that machine. <laughs> Do you just like, ever notice like... <laughs> I get one next. I get one for Christmas. The next Christmas, you all of a sudden get one. I mean, Grant, you really copy me a lot. You go on a nice vacation, so I have to one up you and try to go to a destination game. Yeah, you, same, things are adding up time. now. <laughs> I golf. You start golfing. Okay. <laughs> um, you're a piece of shit, dude. <laughs> So, yeah, that's where I'm at mentally. On this show, we are going to touch on all the football. What's crazy is we still have to talk about the Dallas-Detroit debacle. Don't have to. 
Well, we should touch on it a little bit, but it's not going to be as heated. Alex, because it was the talk of the NFL all week and all weekend, and it still is today. Well, that I also I don't have Twitter. S- screwed my sleep because our f- I woke up at 2.45 a.m. on the 31st to head to the airport. Our flight out of DTW was at 6 a.m. takeoff, so I don't know, 5.30 boarding time. Oh, yeah, so you tried to, you stayed up to watch, watch the Lions game. game. I couldn't get off Twitter because I'm a sicko addict reading all. <laughs> I wanted to see what happened. Thank God I, I don't have it. I didn't go to bed till past midnight. I think I slept an hour and a half, two hours. I was like, I'll get Absolutely. one. It was, it was a lot of good information cycling. there after the game. It was on, it was in favor of the Lions. It wasn't anything like – I had to know it, if like, we screwed up. I watched – so – I saw some – I watched – that we did screw up. TikTok. That the NFL saying, like, you can't try to trick the defense and having three people try to check in. Yeah, they're loser. Uh, I <laughs> deleted Twitter. So the next – so when the second that game ended, I went to bed immediately. It's like it's late. I I remember I lost an hour being in St. Lucia. Right. So it was extra late. Because you already heard last week's podcast early. That's what we joked about. Yes. <laughs> right. Alex already heard this because he's an hour ahead. Right. I heard that part of the podcast. <laughs> so it was late. I went right to sleep because I was and then I went to sleep like, oh, you know, like my dad and I talked about it. We're like, yeah, you know, we competed. So I went to sleep. I didn't know what happened, like technically what happened. I just assumed we were wrong or something now because I didn't stick around. And then when I woke up, took a dump, sat there, watched TikTok. And I like everything on my feed is lions at this point. Just all about that call. I was enraged. Enraged in the morning after ruined. That's why I had ruined to your morning you poo. It. it did. It just ruined my morning. I was like, God, this is this is upsetting. Not to get into the weeds, but I was Yeah, you missed out on the initial yes. wave of anger and then yeah. I was like, oh and then my anger was later. I was like, I could get worked up again if I want, but um yeah, we will get into that. Don't worry. Before then, we will obviously do our weekly check-ins of our New Year's um Rose Bowl, Sugar Bowl, college football playoff. What a night. What a night for the sport. You for all the college football fans out there. Just Maybe a little bit late into the night for those that had to serve our country and work the next day. But the actual games on the field, insane. We'll preview the title game. Wild sentence to even have to say. Lions versus Dallas. And then anything else miscellaneous that we have at the end, maybe any other NFL stuff we can talk about. But that should, based on our like recaps and all everything, that should probably take us the full time. Um, let's do the check-ins. Alex, you start us off. Talk to us about your trip. Besides what s- you talked about, pre-show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to simplify this as best as I can. Because I, no, we it's want, a, it's a long trip. I don't want to go in full detail. It's a long, a long trip. It was eight days in the, in the Caribbean. There's a lot of oh, things you, that could go down. We got. I don't want to tell you where to start. We got to start with your airport. I completely forgot about that. Oh my god, I forgot <laughs> about that. <laughs> we right, joked yeah, about people there. running in airports, and you did let's it. Start there. So my flight was Saturday morning. F- uh, leave Houston six a.m. Central Time. Arrive in Atlanta. They told me nine a.m. Get on the plane. They're like. Don't worry, we're landing early. We're going to land around 8.32. Nice. Fantastic. Because Love to hear my it. next flight in Atlanta was at, I think, 10.40. And they closed boarding doors 20 minutes before 10.40. That's just like the standard, I think. So we, so I'm on the plane. They gave us that announcement. I'm like, oh, I'm good. No worries. My dad had texted me a few days before. Saying like, oof, I don't know, man. You might not make it. <laughs> and so I was already panicked. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. And um, he's like, don't worry. Like, we'll just the, – you and I will just stay in Atlanta for a night and then we'll fly the next day. No big deal. But like in my he, head – He like, really had it planned. Wow. Yeah. I'm like, I'm in my head. I'm like, that'd be terrible. I like, can't have that happen. Go to Moondogs. Moondogs. So that yeah, was on the agenda. Yes. 8.32 – Touchdown. Nice, smooth flight. Land. All right. We are in business. I have tons of time. What do you do for two hours? We're sitting 
like on the runway and I took my seatbelt off. I'm like, I landed, you know, we're good. Like flight attendant looks at me. He's like, we are still in high, high control area. Please put your seatbelt back on. Oh, what a narc. I do say that though. All right. Put it back on. Assuming I'm just going to take it off five minutes. We end up sitting there for like 25 minutes. No one said anything. So it's like eight 55 now. I'm like, oh, what's going on? And then, I mean, sorry, 9.55. I lost a t- an hour, central to eastern. Yeah. So I'm like, now I'm in some trouble because I got to get to that plane by 10.20. 9.55. They come over. Mm. The speaker, he's like, it's a... Uh, it turns out we didn't have a terminal yet because we got here a little too early. So, uh... Yep, we're just going to wait. Should be only a couple more minutes here. And now I'm just, I'm stressed out. I'm like, mm. oh no. There's a couple behind me. So I'm, before I got on the plane, this girl, just complete resting B face, just mm. like looked like a girl I would not want to talk to. Karen. Karen. <laughs> Respectfully. <laughs> yeah, like a, like a 27 year old Karen. Oh. With her husband that probably doesn't like her. And Aww. they're sitting like six <laughs> rows behind me and they're standing up, like looking panicked. The attendant comes over to the PA and is like listing out all the people with connecting flights and like, don't worry, you have tons of time, blah, blah. List everyone except me. So I'm like, oh, okay. So they, they clearly don't realize <laughs> that I have somewhere to be. <laughs> uh, or they do and they don't want to say it. I should be on that list. The lady and her husband behind me, they get up and they start screaming, no, we only have five minutes to get to our – my parents are holding the door. Like she's screaming behind me. I'm like, Jesus Christ, Ooh, lady. Like I have – I am in trouble, but like I'm not making a scene here. And so then we pull up to the thing, the, the terminal finally. I don't know what time it is. If I had to get there by 1020, I'm, I'm, it's probably like 10 something. Like I'm in trouble. Like I'm, I'm in my head. I'm like, we're going to give it our best shot, but we're probably not going to make it. My dad calls me. I don't answer. Cause I'm like, dude, I gotta, I gotta get ready to sprint through mm-hmm. this airport. Um, so I'm trying to get off the plane now. I hate the people that stand up and like, you have to it. do it. You have to like, do it. I purposely sat like when I picked my seat, I was only two rows away from like being the first people off. Nice. Um, so I'm like, I'm good. A wave of people runs up like immediately. I'm like, shit, like I have to get out. And there's people just in the aisle way. And so I just look at this dude and I'm like, I'm going like, I'm sorry. And he's like, what? And I just went right in front of him, grabbed my suitcase from above, holding it in my arms and just go like, just completely bodied him out of the way. I was like, I have no choice. Like I have to do that. Was he on the, were you on the inside and he was sitting next to you? He was standing in the aisle and I just like, oh, okay, I was in aisle seat. So I had this all planned that I was going to be fine. No. So People bum rush the cockpit. Basically. <laughs> basically. So I, I walk out. I'm like, I'm thinking like, I don't need to sprint. Like if I'm close, they'll hold the door. So I'm not like panic, but I'm like slight jog suitcase in my arms, just going up that little ramp to get into the airport. So, cause I'm not, like trying to weave around people and there's like slow old ladies in front of me that are just not moving, not really giving them much room. So I'm just like squeaking by on the sides with my suitcase in my hands. Get down. I get a text from my sister. It's like, hurry the f- up. I'm like, shit. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I'm like, all right, best. now it's time to, to get a move on. So I, I put the suitcase down, rollers, and I am like running full on. While rolling? Down. Like I have it just like behind me in my right hand, just like this, and I'm running, and I'm like going like hero. I'm going like this, like around <laughs> people, like I am getting active. And then I'm, I don't know where I'm going is the problem, because Atlanta is a big airport, and I'm like, I know I need to go downstairs to wherever that like train thing is. I got to get to that. Mm-hmm. I see an escalator. I'm like, shit. I have to go down this and I'm going to have to run by people on this ginormous escalator going down. So I, I have my suitcase like this. I fling it up into my arms while like jogging 
catch it wow. in my hands, holding it like a football, and I'm bobbing and weaving down this escalator. And like people are looking saying, at me like I'm a freak. Were you saying excuse me, excuse me, excuse me? No, I'm just going by. If I see a gap, I was just taking it. I'm just You're assuming your gibbs. Your yes, gibbs it, it felt like I was running back. <laughs> Get down there. Don't know where the train I need to go to is because it goes to the international terminals. Turns out I had to go to the right. I went left, so I'm running left. Realized, look up, see a sign. I'm like, shit, going the wrong way. Turn around. Now I am sprinting even faster. I am not wearing good shoes for this. I'm wearing just like the like flat-footed tennis shoes kind of, but no support. So my feet hurt. Mm. My calves are barking. I'm running. <laughs> Get on this train. I'm like, all right, I can take a breath because like I can't make this train go any faster. My dad calls me again. Don't answer. Text me. Pick up the phone. <laughs> like, all right. Pick up the phone. He's like, where are you? I'm like, dude, I'm trying to run to you. I can't talk to you right now. Like, I'm mad. I'm like, dude, I'm busy. I'm sweating. I'm running. And <laughs> he's like, <laughs> no, no. The the people here, they're closing the doors. And they're, they want to hear you say that you're on your way here. Oh. I'm like, what? Yeah, I was like, yes, I'm coming. And I hung up the phone. I was upset. And so. It's like a hostage situation. Like, let me hear their voice. Make sure My dad alive. said, <laughs> because they didn't hear that, they didn't believe him. Oh. So Garrett pulls up my location. It shows them that I'm in the airport, like coming. And they're like, all right, we'll give you like 30 seconds. So then 30? I get a text, text from my dad. He's like, you got like a minute max. And I'm like pulling up to the next stop. I get out of this train, fling it back up in my arms. Now I have to sprint up an escalator past people. I go by two like uh, pilots. They like, clearly they've seen this before. They're like in front of me. They can sense I'm coming. They just both at the same time, take a step to the right, just like perfectly out of the way, sprint (laughs) past them, get to the top of the escalator. I'm like, oh, I definitely made it. No, E32, I'm at like E11. I'm like, you got to be shitting me. <laughs> so now, now, if I was ever going to be in a TikTok like viral video, it would be this stretch because I am full sprinting, hood like up because I was wearing a sweatshirt, suitcase in my oh. arms because I was like, I can't roll it because like, what if it breaks? What if it falls? Like, I just can't take that risk. I am holding it in my arms like a football, sprinting, sprinting. And like, people are laughing and like, see me. They're like, look at that guy. Like, look at that guy. <laughs> just full running I see him they're like telling my dad they're closing the doors and then my dad like points at me he's like oh it's right there and they start clapping for me I'm like you <laughs> <me>. <laughs> you made it and so I'm like just full on I'm like gray sweatshirt like sweating through it like just terrible <laughs> get on this plane like all these people like are like laughing like when I get on the plane, like it's like very clear. Everybody knows the situation. There's one guy late. It was me. <laughs> and of course, I'm in an exit row. So I sit down, extra leg space. I'm like trying to catch my breath. Lady next to me is like not not thrilled that I showed up because she had put all her stuff in my seat. <laughs> oh, sorry, toots. <laughs> sorry, toots. I'm like, uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm like, I'm there. I sit down, dying. I'm just like putting my head down, you get a tap on my shoulder. It's a flight attendant. She's like, mm-hmm. "I know you're uh, you're a little late, but um, you're in an exit row, and I'm going to need to give you the instructions." <laughs> yeah. so right Are now, you willing to enable? Are you willing to enable, Alex? I was like, "Right now, willing? She's no, like, able? Yes." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I'm willing." She's like, "Do you need a water or something? Like, are you okay?" And I'm like, "No, yeah, totally good. Don't need a water." Oh, the worst part about so this. So they close the boarding doors. We do not take off for 30 minutes. Oh, 30 minutes. And I hear the back of the plane. Also, when I got on, it's where my mom and the rest of my family are sitting. They're just like hysterically laughing because my mom was like making a scene about me not making this plane. Who's like very upset, like going to cry, probably cried. And they thought it was the funniest thing ever. I just hear these people talking about me and laughing about me six rows behind them. This is embarrassing. I never wanted to be this guy. It sucked. I would pay. I would probably pay one hundred and fifty dollars if someone from the airport could like give me the footage. I would. I, would I want to. I want to see like the different terminals. Like somebody does videotaping different people. So when like, it goes me, like different camera different, to camera. Yes, nine different yeah. point of views of you just running by them. I was basically like in a James That's Bond. That's what I want to see. Like, 
running through like a chase down scene. Like that was me. Just you were in Atlanta. Chasing anyone. I'm at the call, like Atlanta airport. Like, Hey, do you have like surveillance video around roughly around like nine 20 ish? It was Saturday? bad. It was bad. I, I, I think a huge factor of, um, that worked in your favor is that this flight was going to St. Lucia. So people were kind of in a good mood going on vacation. If you were getting on a flight to like back to Detroit or Chicago, people would have been so pissed at you that you didn't wait that long. That was like, was it was like cool f- fun vibes. We're going well, to St. In Lucia. fairness, like, Alex, we you could have stood up there. and been like, Hey, we didn't take off in our 30 minutes. So it's really another not thing. Like, also like, like I would be pissed probably, but like at the same time, I did not do a single thing wrong. There was nothing I could do. So True. yeah, just I was not at fault. So I wasn't gonna feel bad. I was just like, this is not on me. This is on like the fact that a terminal did not open up for forty minutes, and I just sat at the airport, could not get off the plane. But we made it. Survived. How long of a flight is that to St. Lucia? It was long. It's like five hours. It sucks. I don't even know where St. Lucia is. That's nothing. To be honest, dude. I never even to heard of it until you went. Honestly, I didn't really know about it. I seen it like one TikTok before, and I sent it to Alex. I was like, "This place looks majestic." It God, is I have some questions. Majestic. But it looks like the Avatar planet. Like, did it feel like you were on a different planet? Whoa! Yeah, it's crazy. It's very All right. crazy. So if it's this nice, I need to look it up. It's pretty crazy. It's like, like even volcanoes oh, and like yeah. mountains amidst Can like a on a beautiful the beach. Time? No, we didn't. That's the whole time. Like so I, now, I could tell some from the stories I saw, but yeah, it looked like I, I, it looked different than m- most tropical places. It was different than anything I've seen for sure, and I've been to not not to humble brag, but I've been to a few islands, so I've seen some some Caribbean. This I was going to ask crazy. you, it was like, where would you rank it compared to the other ones you've been to? Well, I'll just since someone's already done this, I'll just give you my father's rankings of islands. Hell yeah. This is what we need. He uh, he said St. Lucia number one, Turks Reasons and Caicos two, Dominican <laughs> Republic three, Aruba four, St. Thomas five, Puerto Rico six, Jamaica seven, St. Kitts eight. What's the uh, last one? St. Kitts? Yeah. And I've been to all I those except St. Thomas. My sister, she ranked at number two and my mom ranked at number three. What was number one? Turks Emily and high up for them too. Was Emily's number one was Santorini. I've never been to Greece. Mm. That's cheating. That's like Europe. My mom's number one was Hawaii, and then number two for her was Tahiti. Tahiti. Huh. But I don't know. But top she, three in all mm. rankings. It was a, it was a wild sure. island. Um, but what did I do while I was there? Stay at a resort. Not going to give them the name of it. That's just weird. I don't want people to give it to us it for recommendations. It's like all inclusive type joint, like you all said, inclusive resort. The first day, <clears throat> get there at like seven p.m. It's like a travel day. Like no one's in the mood to do anything. There's like seven restaurants. One is a buffet. So the obvious choice when you get there at seven p.m. is like buffet, Golden Corral, baby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, like, they had everything imaginable. Like, Evan would go to town on this buffet. Yeah, um, so would you, Grant, since I've, you're a big, I, a big fatty. I've never – well, I guess the one family cruise we went on, I was young, though. It was, like, all-inclusive. It just feels like all-inclusive is such a relief. Like, just being able to walk around and not even think about spending money. Like, just grabbing – It's a wild, out. wild feeling. It's like, it's when I – because like, when I got back here – and I looked at my cupboard and had nothing. I was like, I have to go buy food? <laughs> <laughs> and this then make is terrible. It? And then make it. <laughs> so, yeah. Buffet first night. Everybody's tired. So, it's an early it's an early bedtime kind of day. It's a travel day. It's probably eight days. Next day, of course, we went to bed at like 8 p.m. So, everybody's up at like 5.30 a.m. Like ready to mm. just, just get it going. Morning workout as a family. Hell yeah. Walked around the resort. No, we did not do that. Walked around the resort, checked out all the places. There's two breakfast spots, one buffet, one sit down. We went to the sit down most of the time. Just what kind of coffee? Out. Could you get like an espresso here? Oh, uh, yeah. Good stuff. They had a cafe, like coffee shop with ice cream, gelato, oh. coffee, specialty oh. coffees, and then 
like uh, alcohol coffees as well. Oh. So just like all you could coffee buffet basically. Um, one thing like when you're in the Caribbean, you're the whole like phrase island time. Like that is real. There is no urgency from anybody in the Caribbean. Mm. Like if you order a coffee, like it's going to take a second. They're going to take their sweet time, mm. which is fine. I get it. They're just like super laid back like people. Like everything's slower. Also, I've now had to like ride in a car to a resort multiple times in the Caribbean when they drive on the other side of the road. And it's like kind of like through mountains and like uh, like small roads. It's mm-hmm. insane. They drive so insane. But like they never get in accidents. It's just like it's a wild experience. It's not it's not enjoyable. So they're just they're if you ever go to the Caribbean you get and you get in a car, just know that they're like they're gonna drive just recklessly. Pray. But you're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. And the ride was two hours to the resort from the airport. So that not great. Wow. But they gave was you it, beer it, in the car. So oh. oh hell yeah. Was it pretty a uh, rural area? Like not a lot of other things around? No, I mean, there's like towns and people and stuff. It's just, it's a little, it's nothing compared to the United States. Like it's way, way, way different. Like it's much poorer. A lot of vegetation. Yeah. At this island, tons of it. It's very green island. I was just picturing a, a bunch of, of like different like and vines and stuff all throughout the resort. Yeah. I'm not on the resort. Like the resort is very mowed up. Tropical animals. Fun fact. Everywhere. they There's a ton of grass at this resort. Like between the sidewalks and stuff, and they mow it with weed whips. So they just like weed whip for like the first six hours of the day, cutting the grass instead of a, a lawnmower. Inefficient. <laughs> Don't get it. Don't understand it. Um. So some highlights. Went on a catamaran. I don't know if you guys know. It's Ever a boat, seen a catamaran? Right? It's like a. Yeah, it's like a boat. But it's big and it's open air kind of like has like a flat deck in the front. Some sometimes they're sailboats. I would just recommend looking at a picture. Oh yeah. Okay. Like smaller boats, but you put there's like thirty to forty people on this boat. Was yours uh powered by an engine or was it sail? Engine. Basically like Yeah, a, it's like a, I see what you're saying. It's a flat, yeah. It's Sweet. like a Big. Well, not not everything I type in now. She just says catamaran cruise, St. Lucia. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we did. It's basically like a bigger pontoon, like a very very nice big pontoon. Oh. Uh, it's like a booze did cruise the, kind of. Did you go to the Carnival Sailing Limited or the Sea Spray Cruise? I think we did Sea Spray. Maybe I don't know. I don't remember. I didn't book it. My mom did. Looks um, sick. So, like, on that, we, you, like, drive around. It was from, like, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So, like, you get on the boat in the morning. Um, you, we went to this place called, I don't know, some French, like, village town place. And they have, like, this is where the volcano was, and there's still, like, hot uh, springs in the volcano. Like, you can oh. see, like, the bubbling, like, geysers. And then there was like this section for like mud baths that makes you 10 yeah. years younger, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. did you go in it? No, we didn't do it. It's, it smells like rotten eggs, like straight up rotten eggs. Quick uh, logistics question. I see the body of water. This is like the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea meet. Is this like where you're at? I don't know. I didn't look at a map. Did you jump in the water? Yeah. In the water? In the ocean? Like on the, like, from the catamaran, like did you go swimming at all during? I'm going this day? through the, I'm going through this day for you. Okay, okay, all right. So we go to this island. We can see the pitons. I would, I would look those up too. They're like pitons. Spelling? P-I-T-O-N. Crouton? Croutons. They're like these like <laughs> big mountain things. Yeah. Like I took a picture of one, put it on Instagram. Pitons. Oh Same yeah, it's show. like a py- It's like a pyramid. Yeah, it's super cool. There's like balls. four or five of them. Those aren't volcanoes. Those are just mountains. I don't know. I didn't listen. Those are sick. They're They're like covered in moss. (laughs) 
they're very big too, very tall. Wow. So like you're like we're on the water, you can see those. We go into this town, go up to the mud bass. You can do that, or you could look at the volcano. Well, out to the volcano. How saw, was it? Saw the geysers and stuff, and this tour guide lady told us about like how one dude was like messing around on the on the rocks over by the volcano, and it went through, and he fell into the water and burnt half his body. It's crazy. Oh um, and that they're like 300 years overdue for an eruption. <laughs> um, don't worry, guys. Technology is very good now. So it, they will know like seven months in advance and everyone will evacuate safely. No worries, guys. Very smart these days. I believe it when I see it. Um, so after that, got back on the boat around noon. They served us lunch, I guess, on that island first. Then we got back on the boat at noon and... Um, the next stop was snorkeling in like a bay. So I went to this sweet bay and this bay was like a party bay. There's like a ton of boats and like, it looked like, like TikTokers partying. Like That's just sweet. a bunch of like 18 to 25 year olds just like getting hammered oh. on boats. I'm like, I wonder how these people can afford these boats or like how they got here and all this. I had a million questions. I'd never found out, but we just went past them and went snorkeling in this bay. It was Livy Dunn and Paul Skeens. Uh, oh. Saw a lot of fish. Didn't see turtles, but that was oh. the goal. The goal was to see turtles. My dad claims he saw turtles. I, mean, <laughs> I, think, he's, I think he's capping. <laughs> no, you did not just say capping. Oh, uh, that was take it back. Cap and no cap were like the main vocab of my father this this trip. He's just around on that. Because Tyler said he's no like, cap one time, and my dad's like, "What does that mean?" <laughs> And so then, like, after a dinner, my dad was like, this dinner was great. No cap. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. I'm like, so. Does your dad cap 100? Does he know what that means? Yeah, we had to teach him that one, too. What about bet? Is he on no. the counseling? No. Oh, we don't say that. Anyways. I didn't see a lot of those, Evan. Sorry. Snorkel. Yeah, it's a story. Yeah, get back on the boat the at, like, 1.30. And then that's the full, full booze cruise until 5.00. So you're like you're going around all and you're in the ocean, you're going through, you're looking at all these places just from the boat, and you're like going into coves and like just basically you're just like on a pontoon going around Evans Lake, but way cooler. Is it um is it like a slow, nice, relaxing drive, or does he go fast and like what's the te- what's the pace of this boat? Pretty, pretty, I don't know, like 15 miles an hour, but it's like a big boat, so you can't really like tell if you're going fast. It's more just relaxing booze crews. And- yeah, you're just chilling. Then there's they start bumping music, and they're handing out mm-hmm. drinks, full bar, all-inclusive. Just can get hammered. They're, they so started cool. doing like uh, beer chugging competitions. Did you win? What? Uh, I did not participate as a reflux evan uh, tyler participated he does not drink beer either and he he's a twee guy michigan state frat star he pulled out all the stops i've never seen anybody chug a beer faster he won with ease wow and i was like that's he, a he like pulled it up and like two-handed guzzled it i was like wow that's impressive <laughs> out of a can uh i don't or, know i think it was a bottle it was a bottle wow and it was wow. it was fast i I looked at my dad. I'm like, did they only fill it like a quarter full? He's like, no, that thing was just opened. I was like, wow. It was wild. (laughs) So then my sister, you know, she competed as well in the beer chugging challenge against the chicks or the ladies. And uh, no, this one lady was a demon. She was on demon. (laughs) (laughs) She, She won with these. It was like this thing where like you had to like dance around and then they would like stop the music and you have to chug your drink. So it was, it was pretty it's funny. Like musical chairs, but booze. Yeah. So like we now alcohol is flowing, music's bumping, taking in all the scenery. Sunset on the boat the last like 30 minutes of the ride. So you're just taking it in, standing on the front of this boat, just in the sunshine. Look at the Titanic. Titanic. Yeah. I mean. it was very cool. Very cool. Water was insanely blue. Like you can basically like, just like see to the bottom. It's crazy. Super nice. Yeah, so I'd recommend a catamaran if you ever. Uh, was the driver giving out any fun facts like of the area? Like, is there? Yeah, a, they would like anything? stop and point at stuff and like say like this is this or this. Like they we pointed at one like cove and it was like this is where the Pirates of the Caribbean was filmed. I was like, this makes a lot of sense. 
Um, I'd be so annoying. I'd be asking so many follow up questions. Do, do you guys know what Doctor Doolittle is? Yeah, like Eddie, that Murphy? Eddie Murphy movie. That yeah. was they showed us where that was filmed in this little cove. Wow, I was like that seems weird. Like, what is that movie about? What a budget that they it's had, about, Jesus, like, to go to San Lucia to film. Um, and then they showed us this resort that was the most expensive resort on the island, and it was like three grand a night to stay there, and it's like where <laughs> celebrities stay. Like Jay Beebs. Wow. So wow. I was like, all right, well, I'll never be there in my life. But good to see it. Um and so yeah. That was that was probably my favorite part was the boat. Because the ocean's awesome. I'm a big ocean guy. Well, I ocean over pool for me, personally. Wow. Um, other things we did, kayaked in the ocean. I paddle boarded for the first time. Those ones Ooh. where you stand up and you just like. How'd you like that? It's like tiring. Or did you like it's it? It's kind of tiring. Like I'd rather just I, sit. <laughs> I got a bad center of gravity. I did it once on a, a lake and I, I didn't love it. I felt like I was going to fall every time. I didn't fall. I had no troubles. I'm pretty balanced. But and my dad's pretty good at it too. So it's like if he can do it, I can do it. It is tiring. It's a good arm workout. Uh, we bought some uh, snorkels. The gift shop and just hammered because like the resort is up against like the ocean so you could just go swim out and like there's tons of fish in there so you could just like go snorkel on your own so we did that a lot was there a big uh i'm thinking of like our camping trip is there a big like drop off point like how far out was the drop off in the ocean it's like t- take five steps and you drop and it's up to your neck and then like swallow wow. further and it's just yonder how are the waves you get any boogie boarding in no boogie boarding. Waves are like probably not big enough for that. They're like big, but they don't like crash over you. Like I don't think you could really do that. Are we talking like 85, 90 degree weather the whole time? The temperature was 81 the entire time and never changed. It was, but That's the electric. sun was like close to you. Felt like closer than normal because you're basically on the equator. Every single day oh. in St. Lucia for 365 days, it's 81 degrees. That's awesome. It's crazy. Well, I could get a little old. I, mean, I did not. It did great. not get old. It did not. <laughs> um, and then they had a bunch of pools. Went to the pools. They did, you know, lots. They had a they had a team they called the Vibe Team. They wore like green <laughs> green shirts. It says Vibe Team. How do on. I get this job? How do I get this job? And dude, yeah, honestly, it'd be a sick job. You just like go around and you like just like do games with people like. If you're at like, so there's like an adult side of the resort and then like the the rest of the resort, we had wristbands for the adult, which means you can go to either one, but the adult, no kids. So in the adult vibe team, it was like drinking games. So that was fun. They were like, oh my God. They did like games, like, like couple games where they would like ask questions the other to the, to the partner or whatever. So like these dudes are answering questions about their wives, about their like boob size. It's hilarious. Let's let's quit it all and just go move to St. Lucia and be a part of the adult vibe team. I, I don't know how you get that job. They were all definitely just full on St. Lucians, like they're Caribbean people. I got fun fact. I got told by three people on the island that I look like a local. Like thought I was oh. thought I was a local, and I'm like. Like not to be like that guy, but like I'm white. Like, I don't. His face is my face. I'm like, I didn't. What? I didn't understand it either. And this, they kept coming up to me like, "Yeah, you know, you look like one of my boys." Like, I was like, "What?" <laughs> so yeah, I had a guy come up to me on the beach and say like, "I look like one of his boys. I look like a local, and then I need some weed." And like, just like pulled out a shit ton of weed and like was like, "Do you want some?" I'm like, "No, and you thank you." Yes. But. Oh, nice <clears throat> offer. Um, so yeah, it's fun. I pulled up some pictures. You look nothing like these people. I agree. I am not <laughs> a Caribbean looking person. Not to like, profile Grant, but Alex, multiple. I'm a white dude. People. I don't know why people thought it, but you are. Yeah, <laughs> they did. So maybe I can get on the vibe team since I look like a local. Oh my God. Please hire us if you do. Um, or Grant, we could just run like the, uh, the shack that has all the kayaks and stuff. We just buy a bunch of kayaks, put up a little shack, and we rent them out to people. Yep. Serve like coconut daiquiris out of it. Yeah. 
We just need to be a part of the vibe team. It'd be sick. Although sports, though, hour ahead, that's going to make late games. Even also, worse. they don't have that's the only sucks. channel they had was ESPN two, and then they had these things called Flow Sports. Oh hell yeah, I've heard of that. You have? Yeah, I've heard of that. It's like an advertisement before. <laughs> FLO. FLO Sports. Flow Sports. <laughs> yeah. There's like with no W. Flow one through five. And I could not like flow one through four was like soccer games from like two months ago. And then oh. <laughs> maybe <laughs> one one of the channels had cricket and then flow five was <laughs> Monday night football. So that's how I got Lions Cowboys. We illegally yeah, streamed Lions Vikings. Like some guy just plugged in a computer that oh of the vibe team. Plugged in a computer. Some guy told him how to illegally stream it and then he just put it up on TV. Stream East, baby. Let's do it. I didn't watch Michigan State basketball on Stream East. Don't come for me. Good uh, internet there, like Wi Fi? Yeah, I connected to it right away. I had no problems. It turns out in St. Lucia, you'd think like with international, you should you wouldn't be able to text. But it was free in St. Lucia. So you didn't have to do like the Verizon thing where you had to get like a special no, number. Or I got there and I landed. I got a text that says T Mobile is proudly now free in St. Lucia for United States customers. So I was like, all right, that's interesting. Things are turning up, Alex. Yeah, I didn't need my phone really, but. And then the only other thing was on the way back, instead of that two hour car ride, we took a boat to the airport. Similar to like the boost cruise on the way there. Just didn't get sloshed. Just had mimosas. Looked at the That's scenery sick. on a boat before you get on a plane. Get in. Yeah. Food was good. Went off the island one time. Some like fancy Michelin restaurant. Five star thing. I don't know. It was a bad night for me. So I, I couldn't tell you. But <laughs> heard it was good. I just ate a bunch of bread. Hmm. And I, the last thing I would say, if you guys ever do go to an all-inclusive, just be careful. Just be careful. There, There's so many like drinks that I think Evan would love. And then the hmm. sugar rush and then headaches that would come for Evan afterwards would just be hmm. brutal. So the funniest timing was – we did the show with Cody and talked about our New Year's resolution. So I went back and listened to last year's and yours was to drink less as you were on this vacation and you were texting or Snapchatting the group about dinner. And I was like, this is just ironic that Alex's goal. I was like, yeah, I think he's been good about that. Namely in 23. I think I did a good <laughs> job in 23, but yeah, the final week of 23, <laughs> all inclusive boots, food. That I didn't eat that much. Surprisingly. So good. I feel like I did not eat that much. Also, I dunked a basketball on nine foot. Good for me. Whoa, I would have led with that. <laughs> yeah. I just picked it up. It, I thought it was 10 feet. So, like, imagine this. I'm in my flip-flops, swimsuit, no shirt. I'm I'm waiting at – there's, like, a food truck. And they have, like, food they can go get, all-inclusive. And so, I'm, I'm, like, waiting there. I see a basketball court, like, in the middle of this resort. And there's a ball. I'm, like, it looks like 10 foot. I'm just going to go shoot while I'm waiting for my quesadilla and whatever else from this food truck. Go up to it, take my shoes off. I'm like, oh, I think I can dunk. Like, I, I'm feeling it today. Just go up, <laughs> jump up, just flat-footed, straight vertical jump, jammed it in. I'm like, holy shit, what have I been doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're like the Like Mike movie. You thought you had Michael Jordan shoes Literally, on. I was like, oh, my God. I was no shoes on. I just dunked flat-footed. I'm like, what hap- What is happening? Have I improved my vertical? And then my dad looks at me. He's like, yeah, it's not 10 feet. I go. Not confirmed. It was at least nine. I'm still going to go with the fact that it was 10. Tyler then, eight who's half. two inches taller than me, tried to dunk, stuffed by the rim. You tell me. Wow. You tell me. <laughs> wow. I might have dunked a basketball. First time. <laughs> That'd be super impressive. So I do need to try next time I'm around a hoop. I'll let you guys know. I might be a dunker now. <laughs> Ten point days are over. <laughs> Lob it to the rim. Um, all right. Scale of one to ten overall, would you recommend it as a trip? Yeah. I would give it a eight. I'd give the vibe of the island, the water, everything like that, a ten. I give the resort itself like a seven and a half. All right. 
would I would I go back? Probably not. Only because I just would I would just want to see new things. I would want to go somewhere new. <clears throat> All right. Um, Evan, you're oh, we will, you go to the Riv. I, I have to start with that. Were yeah, the Riv was that? Yeah. I, was, I thought when I first glanced at that, I thought that was, was like, the new Tecumseh Tavern. Tecumseh Tavern. And I was like, holy shit, this place is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was what, like, god what, damn, Tecumseh is going nuts. It's like Colby. Just you guys something? like tapped in and like around. It was like someone were, like, had their phone way up and you could see like the whole thing. I was like, wow, Tecumseh the Tavern. Tavern I gotta get, was that Cody's, Cody's, uh, not Cody's, uh, Colby's uh, like right at midnight Snapchat? Yeah, it might have been. It might have been that. I, think it was I can his, see his all of you. Story, like, I think it's it a picture of like the whole bar. I think it was a video. Yeah, okay. I think it, yeah. And, and I, I was the like, I get back to the Tecumseh. And I was like, wow, Tecumseh Tavern is. Oh popping. yeah, the people making out was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, we were in. I went to well, first of the week. I'm just gonna sandwich my story in between Alex and Grant's week really because mine was super boring, uh, comp- relative comparative. You guys, Sorry. Um, Grant's is gonna take okay. the show. So. That's what we, we just, we just this week. Ourselves. I didn't really do much work, work slept, work slept, and then uh, finally had a couple of days off. So I went up to East Lansing, the old stopping grounds for uh, New Year's Eve. And a day. Oh, How did that come about? Day before. Great choice to do that because New Year's Eve is always tricky. New Year's, New Year's Eve, Eve sucks. Um, it is first one I've ever spent. It's by the myself, second though. most overrated holiday of the year. What's one? Halloween, Halloween is the most for sure. Halloween, ha- uh, holiday of the year. Wow. Halloween and New Year's Eve are like my least favorite. For sure. Yeah. Um, hmm. It was good. I think people just wanted to go somewhere and um, I was outnumbered. I wanted to kind of stay. I wanted to be the old guy and stay in town so I didn't have to travel. But Tecumseh Tavern style? God, yeah, I, I really got excited. I was like, Tecumseh Tavern is that kind of place. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I was like, uh, and I was looking at, oh, there's a beer pong table. I think that's the rib. <laughs> yeah, I double take. Um, busy like, though. No, there's no way this is happening to Compsy because like where are all these it's people? It's cool that there's from? that. It's cool that it's that packed for New Year's Eve when it's on like break. On break, yeah. I did not think cover. I got there. No cover. There was no cover because we got there so effing early. Well, you were probably nervous that you wouldn't get in. So we're like, okay, New Year's Eve, you know, there's a couple bars that were selling tickets and they were already like sold out or there was limited mm-hmm. access. So we're like, all right. You, and you don't want to get left in just the house with the boys. Correct. And we're like, well, you know, <laughs> there's nothing like we're not doing anything throughout the day. Like we can literally leave at whatever time. So we're like, let's like shoot for like seven, seven thirty. We left oh, somewhere. That's not between. even that it early. Ex- it, we didn't leave extremely like at seven or somewhere in between there. Um, we got there and. We were literally the second group in that bar. It was completely empty. It was that awkward? Empty. There was one other group there playing all beer dudes. Ball. There was not one person sitting at it. No, it was all girls. There was not oh. one table. <laughs> there was not one table filled. Not one person sitting down when we got there. Mm. We put in a shift at the rib. We were there for six hours. Oh, dear God, <laughs> over six hours. You're there. You shut it down. That's a lot of pitchers. No, I guess the bars didn't. We were there from seven to seven to one, oh, like after one. Wow, seven fifteen to like one fifteen, so like six hours. Got it. Wow. Um, things got out of control. That's why we left at like one fifteen. Somebody was overserved or overserved themselves. <laughs> um, <laughs> like so describe this. I I finished my pitcher and I'm like, I want to go to the bar, like, and then <laughs> like, okay, let's go, let's go. Get a drink together. I'm like, okay, totally fine. Is and he normal at this point? Me. No, he was already drunk. I could tell it on his face. He was smacking me. He's like, dude, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? I was like, I just <laughs> give me a beer. He's like, oh, pitcher. I was like, you know, what? give me whatever you're gonna get. Get just get me. So he's up at the bar. I'm turning around talking to people that we know, ladies. Yes. Oh, but it was Mitch, no. Mitch's girlfriend. Oh. Um. Oh, okay. And so he's smacking me. And I just turn around and he just like gives me like the thumbs up, like, don't worry, dude, I got it. I was like, what did you get me? And he's like, I got you a beer. I was like, okay, did you get like what you want? He's like, oh yeah. Okay. So he hands me my pitcher. I turn around for a half a second. I turn around both hands. He has two champagne bottles. He bought oh. champagne bottles <laughs> from the rim. Oh my God. Yes. What a move. Oh. I 
was like, I can't believe this. That's and so funny. I instantly, I sprint away. I sprint away from Dude, home. that is. I go back to our time. That is and a I smacked, move. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I smacked Colby on the arm. And I was just like, hey, buddy. Uh, <laughs> drunk. And Colby's like, well, how bad is he? So I was like, you'll find out when he brings over what he just bought. <laughs> and Colby was like, I was picturing like, over like a tray of bunch of shots. Nope. Walking around with two <laughs> champagne bottles. <laughs> That's oh, awesome. Let's just say those champagne bottles got passed around. It was a good time drinking up. Some people didn't like them. So I like, I what enjoyed it. It's basically just like that? spark. The, luckily for him, it was only like 20 bucks a bottle. Oh, but God. still 20 bucks oh, a God. bottle at the Riv is still. I mean, honestly, uh, that's a pretty good deal. It, it's, it's a good party move. Bad. But he then it, it, it hit midnight and he was just spraying them on everybody. Then this is exactly what happens. Probably has I would say a three quarters of a full of a pitcher of a beer. He then takes the pitcher and wants to like celebrate. He throws the beer in the air. <laughs> Whoosh! What happens when you throw something up in the air? What happens to it? It comes down. It came straight down like it was out of a cartoon. Comes straight down on him. Just splash. <laughs> he is soaking wet. Like if he, his front of his sweatshirt was a different color compared to like his sleeves because how wet he got. <laughs> what a moron. Like I had to turn around. Literally not 10 seconds later, the owner's like walking by and I was like, he, he definitely just watched all of it. Nope. Didn't even care. Just walk on by and I was like, Ryan. at that point I was like, guys, we- <laughs> belligerent. this is belligerent level. It was funny. It was a good time. Um, <laughs> the throwing I it. beer in the air is just remarkable. Yes. I got to go to Leo's. Back down. I got to go to Leo's on nice. whatever that was, Sunday Gross. morning. Was New Year's so Day. Did you have diarrhea? Yes, New Year's Day. I did not, no. Hmm. Wow. I feel like that's Alex's first <clears throat> question every single time. My New Year's Eve, while you were doing that, I was just on an airplane by myself and realized this is the first time I ever – had a New Year's Eve by myself. I did, I was looking back on our like our uh, my Snapchat memories over like the last. I was just laughing over like the last couple of years. Like we've been together for most of them. Like us group. Uh, yeah. New Year's like two years ago we were up north and went through that whole like experience up in Munising. Oh, that was a fun. That was a fun New Year's Eve. That was that was a, a lot fun New Year's Eve. We didn't really do any. We just. Just, played to ride the bus. Just, we had a great time in that house for some reason. And then we just kept saying, like, wow, Lake Superior's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, that was about it. You didn't um, do anything else fun? I guess I, you guys had a show last week, so I'm I'm just catching up. I, don't, I heard about your Christmases. Hmm. Yeah. A basketball Christmas. game tomorrow. Air Horn for JV. Over break at airport. airport showcase. That was on Friday for the varsity. They yeah. lost their first game on Friday in a tight, tight game. Are they ass? Yeah. What? <clears throat> Are they ass? Airport? No, to come see men's basketball. Are they yeah, ass? Six and one on the no. year. Oh, they're good. Six and one, Alex. Yeah. You must have missed that. It's the first time they've been undefeated into Christmas break since like the 80s, Evan said. Yeah. But they're six and one. They lost. Now, now they are. Well, going they into the break, they were on their feet, and they lost on the 29th. So they suck. <laughs> Good for them. Grant, what'd you That's do, That's about man? mine, Grant. Grant, you had an exciting trip. Yeah, I think um, – I'll walk oh, through Oh, we could it. do this during I the won't... game. Yeah, you're right. Most of it would be about the game, but this travel – Give us the non-game stuff, stuff right now. Well, I'll just – well, I think the next topic after this will be the game. So I'll just tell it and then it, we'll right get into, into like the actual X's and O's of the game parts of no, it. No, not X's and Do you guys have any cl- – but just like moments in the game, whatever, because that's part of the story. If you guys have any questions, I have interrupt one. me. Just stop me because I'll probably be rambling the whole time. But, yeah, start us off if you want. I have a question. Was yeah. that Pittsburgh Steelers entrance like in the stadium? Were you already yeah. in the stadium at that point? That was like five hours before kickoff. Or your picture sent late. No, I, it was, we went. the gates opened at 1130 for a 2 p.m. kick. And we went in right at 1130 just to be in. Damn, I could have sworn it was like four hours before. 
it probably felt e- i kept thinking eastern time it was weird i know it was the same i was like it feels like it'd be a my timing time. was all PM off though like i I'd, I'd gained two hours getting back and i'd just been back to houston so maybe that was me i'll try to rip through not rip through but like go through the different points to stand out and then like i said if you guys didn't can you start from the beginning because right, you had a yeah. day there before and i'm very curious yeah. what you did not much it was a it was a business football trip i was my dad had never been to california i had been there for two days before i saw santa monica why'd you go there i'd seen like uh i did a sales internship with the dodgers All right, you went with your mom interview and my mom went out with me yes, i remember realized it. that i cannot do ticket sales um uh, we have openings an excuse to basically see to see uh, <laughs> um they made me cold call for an hour. I think I got one guy to agree to do a tour of the stadium. It was felt good, but I was like, I cannot do this. I am not built for to work the phones. We're like always that. searching for crazy. people like that. If you know anybody, <laughs> so I, I had seen the like Hollywood Hills area in Santa Monica. I didn't need to see anything. My dad's not. He didn't need to see much. So we land um, in LA. We had a connection to Charlotte, which just seems so stupid to go from Detroit to Charlotte and then to. LAX, but that's just what the flights were. Like all the direct flights were pretty much booked and they were crazy, even more expensive than what the flights already were. So we get there. It's like morning time still because you gain three hours. Um, a big theme of the Rose Bowl is it is like a logistical nightmare. Like it felt like you're on an amazing race, national treasure, book of secrets type stuff, the things you have to do to just get to this venue. Um, but it all starts with just like LAX being a very populated city. Like you get to the airport there. We're going to Uber um, to downtown LA. So first logistics is airport is kind of like by the coast. Downtown LA is about 20, 25 minutes away. And then Pasadena is further to the right, about another 20, so traffic is away. bad, so <clears throat> as everybody says. And to and from the airport, not at all. Um it was easy. My dad even made a comment to the Uber driver. He's like, yeah, it's like a holiday. It's not Saturday because we landed on Sunday. He goes, if you were here yesterday, it'd be a lot more um, busy or on a work day, it'd be more busy. So we got lucky, awesome. I would say. It but looks terrible. In fun- so you have to get off. You like follow the rat race of all these signs to get the ground transportation. I think I'm at the Uber pickup. I pull up the app. I'm like, all right, let's do this. Keep in mind, backstory, my dad hurt his knee moving things out of our house like a week prior. So he had like a pretty noticeable limp the whole trip. He was grinding. Like he said when he first got hurt, he thought he wasn't going to be able to go. So brutal. I'm glad he he had like a deep bone bruise in his knee and like was just so credit to him. So it was all the walking traveling. Just, yeah. So I think we're at the Uber pickup. I go to order it. It says you have to take a shuttle to the Uber Lyft drop off. So then we had to walk back, get up on a shuttle bus that takes you like 15, 20 minutes away from the airport to this big like parking lot with all these tents and numbers to get the Uber Lyft. Just cook, they had, they did that once at New York for construction, but this was like extreme. So we get there, finally get in the Uber. And my dad's just trusting me because I'm like, no, we're going to, he's like, well, why don't we just take a taxi? And I was like, no, like Uber will be good because we don't know like how expensive it's going to be. Like taxis can sometimes just like screw you and say the fare's way higher. So we finally get an Uber. Both Ubers we had on the trip, the two drivers love talking sports. It was awesome. The first guy was a Lions and Michigan fan. So we were just talking about the Dallas game the whole time, talking about the Rose Bowl. My Is dad, Larry a big my dad, my dad was chat, like, chat up the Uber guy? Yeah, he was always like, where are you from? And talking. Like, it was easy because we were – He, I think my dad – no, I don't think we had Michigan stuff out on the way out. But I think he asked us, why are you in town? And we just said we're here for the Rose Bowl. So talked about that. Get downtown to the hotel. We stayed at the Westin Bonaventure. You downtown Fun Los fact. Angeles? Yeah, like pretty close to the crypto Lakers arena. Like in the financial like district. Sick? It, it reminded it's like me. Cool. It's, it's grungy. Like LA's not cool? Uh Never no, been. I think it is. It reminded me of it reminded me of New York, where like there's once you're on the sidewalks, tall buildings, f- a lot of financial buildings because we were in that section. Um, but there's definitely grunginess to it. Like you can tell the graffiti and the homelessness, like that is present. Um, like here, the hotel, Weston, um, nice hotel. It was featured, I guess, in the Dark Knight. I, I was trying to find the film. And the scene that it was, but my dad told me that fun fact, and I was like, "No way!" It's a cool, 
a cool hotel the way it's designed. Um, checked in, uh, made sure the front desk could hold our bags the next day because we were checking out of the hotel. So we had to make sure the front desk could hold our bags to get them after the game, which they were totally fine with. They're like, yeah, we do that. Like, we'll just hold them and then you come get them. Um, oh, that that would have stressed me out that nightmare. Like logistically, yeah, I wouldn't have I, even thought of like, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> I would have just been like, what do I do with my bags? Most hotels will. I did that once in Chicago when Marissa and I went. We had to go get breakfast, so we just had them hold our bags for a little bit. But this was the whole day, and they're like, "Yeah, totally fine." Um, a lot of Michigan fans in the hotel. A lot of Bama fans. Like I have never really traveled that much to a destination like this, but that's a huge part. Is obviously seeing all the fans throughout the whole day or so, like mingling with them. Like, where are you from? Blah blah blah. Went up to the the, the the New Year's Eve, we didn't do really anything. We went up to the hotel. I laid in bed, and I was like, I might fall asleep. But we just kept our eyes awake and watched the red zone and finished the um, beginning slate of games. And then once it was like halftime of the chiefs Bengals, we were like, let's go get food. And we were thinking about like walking 15 minutes to go to this big Grand Central Market. And my dad was icing his knee, and I was like, I don't need to walk 15 minutes to get food. Like We just went to the hotel bar because there was a good bar down there and got food, solid, and then went upstairs. And I fell asleep at 6 p.m., like an hour into the Sunday night game. And I woke up because I was so tired. 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Eastern. But still, I woke up. You probably woke up at 3 a.m. I woke up at nine. I woke up right after the ball dropped. Oh, 9 p.m. I, I was like, holy shit. Took a three hour na- <laughs> you slept no. a long time. <laughs> no, I took a three hour nap, woke up. Um, my dad had already gotten ready for bed, I think at like eight. So he was asleep. And then I got ready. I like was on my phone for a little bit, saw the end of the game, like looking at the scores and then went to bed early because we we're going to get up decently early for it. Also, the parade and Pasadena starts at 8 a.m. It goes from 8 to 10 is when the parade starts in Pasadena. So we get up. My dad was up early, like at 5.30. I knew he would because he went to bed at like 8. And even though we were tired from the floor. Every, like, every dad like, in so America I, wakes up at 5.30. <laughs> I was up at 6, too. Like I was like ready to go. Um, got ready. Checked in our checked our bags. So we go outside. We step out um, of the hotel. I'm like, all right, let's just try to Uber to – the, around the parade drop us off before we'll walk to because they shut down a bunch of streets i'd already done research they have a pretty decent subway system in la similar mm-hmm. to new york but not as big so i knew we had that in our back pocket um if we needed it it's just a little bit longer to get out there but way cheaper um i tried ordering an uber and like there was a bunch around us but none of them would pick us up and i was like i i wonder if like they just don't they won't deal with the parade like maybe it's too much of a headache to pick you up and i tried Two, three Ubers, Lyft, every, no one would pick us up. I was like, all right, we got to like, we like, got to go to like the us in Minnesota. So, yeah. God, that was terrible. It, that yeah. Gives me but that was late night. That was like 2 a.m. I just got <laughs> stranded downtown Minnesota. <laughs> so we just, we walk, I was like an eight minute walk to the subway, figured out how to use the subway system, hopped on. It was like a 40 minute subway ride to get out there, which standing. Stopped. No. It was a pretty empty car. Sit down. That's good. A um, pro move that saved me as I was debating. Like I wanted to take some photos and videos, mm-hmm. but I was worried about my phone battery with all the logistics that we had to do. So I brought a mobile charger and I just kept it in my back pocket the whole day. It was so clutch. And they let me take it into the stadium. So if you ever go to that, bring a mobile charger because I left the game with like 95% battery, which was huge because we needed like logistics and Ubers and stuff. So just charging my phone. Um, get to it's called Old Town Pasadena. Get off the tracks. Uh, there's a bunch of people there that are workers with megaphones saying like, "Walk two blocks south for the parade." Like, all right, sweet. Problem was, it was like eight thirty, eight forty five. I had to pee so incredibly bad, like it hurt to hold it in. And I'm trying to find a place to pee, and a lot of the places are shut down because it's New Year's Day. Some of them are open, but they have lines like out the door to use the restroom, and they all say like, "Paying customers only." Blah blah blah. So we stand at the parade for probably like two minutes. I'm just like, I just can't enjoy this. Like, I can't stand here for an hour and 15 minutes and watch floats go by while I'm about to pee my pants. So I was like, I was like, dad, just stay here on the corner. I'm going to go walk around. I was like going in the alleyways behind businesses. I'm like, do I pee there? It's like 830 in the morning. I don't want to get public uh, indecency and not be able to go to the Rose Bowl. I was like, I have to find a restaurant. I found this Boba Tea Cafe like two blocks away. There was like barely anyone in it. You had to pay a dollar to pee. 
did that best money I've ever spent. <laughs> Pete came back super refreshed. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go. Watch the parade. It was pretty cool. Um, no the way you're were a huge. Guy. No, the, the floats were absolutely massive. So it was impressive to see how they made them. And then um, the Michigan band went by, the Alabama band went by. That was cool. The band that stole the show was an HBCU, uh, North Carolina A&T. Unbelievable band. Like was playing jams and like they were dancing. Like their band, I know HBCUs are known for that. They stole the show in my opinion of what I saw on the Rose Bowl Parade. That good. Um, classic old like horny dude there was like dudes in front of us in the the pageant uh the queen of the parade it's like the queen in her court of the rose bowl parade was going by he goes now this is my favorite float so far like <laughs> random dude in front of us i was like all right buddy like let's relax <laughs> <I'll JMB laughs> was talking about the floats quite a bit <clears throat> the float they'd like yeah. every like um commercial break basically <clears throat> they would talk about they'd go to like their correspondent they had the second to last float grant i don't know if you knew that <laughs> I was told they had people on there and fine bomb was, and I was ready to boo him, but I did not stay and see for that. Um, the, the San Diego zoo float was the best float I saw. It was a freaking sweet. They had koala bears in a tree, it, like rotating. They had a huge polar bear. They had a lion on top of like a mountain that was roaring. It was a, it was a sick float. So San Diego zoo stole the show from me and the a N C A N T band. So, Logistics wise, it's like 945. The shuttles to the Rose Bowl open at 10 a.m. I was like, all right, I think we should leave at 945. I'm cool with the parade. Let's start walking to the Rose Bowl shuttles. We walk back to the train station where the people were. I was like, hey, are the Rose Bowl shuttles like this way? And the guy like didn't know, which is crazy to me. He was like, oh, I think they're supposed to be picking people up here, but it's not started yet. And I was like, that just doesn't seem right. Like, I think they would be here by now if it's 15 minutes from starting. So we were looking at the street signs and it said Rose Bowl shuttles this way. So just followed that like five. It was This was another like 15 to 20 minute walk just to find to get to the shuttles to go to the Rose Bowl. This place sucks. So it's just a, it's a it's like a, an adventure. You're walking. This is my nothing's like, easy. Question. Also, rookie mistake by my dad. He kind of had to pee when I did, but he didn't go. We already started walking the opposite direction. He's like, hey. I could go to the bathroom, like if you know where that place is. And I was like, yeah, it's like two blocks back. So we had to backtrack. <laughs> we go in there. Funny, we we bought our um, subway tickets and he put in cash, a $20 bill, and it was $14. So we got $6 back in change, but they spit them out as these gold coins that were like $1 coins. Like it looked like fake money. <laughs> and I thought it was only for the subway. And But he gave it to the lady at the boba counter to go pee. And she's like, oh, this is a pretty cool coin. He goes, yeah, it's a dollar from the subway. I think it's legit. And she goes, oh, sweet. I was like, I can't believe she just took that. But <laughs> legend. I just funny. got on my board game. Yeah, it's legit. Trust me. <laughs> legend. So we walked. This also, this boba cafe was kind of like a, they had a curtain. It was a long hallway to go back to the bathroom. He walks back there. The line is longer. I think it was like 30 people deep to pee. So he's like, I can't do this. So he walked back out. I'm like, are you sure? Like. I don't, I don't know how long the shuttle is going to be. Like, if you have to pee bad, we're going to have to find a place before we get on the shuttle. Thankfully, we get closer to the shuttles. There's this so big parking lot of these. He didn't like, go. Yeah. He's like, I lost a dollar. I was like, who cares? Like, <laughs> it was a coin. <laughs> Larry um, is making some bold decisions on this trip. Yeah. yeah. Went back for the so bathroom, now didn't we're, pee. Yeah. He's like, I shouldn't have given her my dollar. I was like, who cares? Like, it's a gold coin. But it was, it was, it was a long line. We're walking to the shuttles. There's a big parking lot um, of these like, RVs and Sprinter vans. I'm like, oh, this has to be the shuttles. It wasn't. It was like, I don't know if they're for VIP or not, but they're like nicer vans. I think that we're going to take people. So we kept ha- kept having to go around the corner um, on the sidewalk of a street. And then thankfully, there was a bunch of porter potties there, so we could stop, use it before the shuttle. So then we were close. The guys, these workers kept being like, all right, you're like, it's this way, it's this way. We get there, the shuttles are just starting up. We hop on the shuttle, and it's still another like 15 so minute drive. From wanting to go to the Rose Bowl. But this is cool, Alex. I didn't know where the stadium really was. Like when you see the aerial shots, you just see the mountains and it's the in the middle of nowhere. Lot. And what's a- it's in the middle of like a neighborhood. It's like Lambeau yeah. Field. You are driving through like residential houses. That still have their Christmas lights up and all these palm trees. And I'm like, where the where are we going? <laughs> like, this looks like we're going to like a sub like someone's backyard. And then you just make this like one turn on this back road, and it's just a big old just parking lot. And you're like there. 
I'm like, oh my God, like we're here. This is it. <laughs> so you get out of the shuttles. They made these um enclosures, like man-made barricades to funnel you this way towards like the fan fest and the tailgates and all that. Um, you couldn't get into the stadium yet. So it's like an outside barricade around the edge of the stadium. So we're just following for the fan fest and all that stuff. And it, there's also a golf course on the north side of the stadium. So the tailgate's on a big golf course. It was sick. It's called like Brookside Golf Club. Um, my biggest regret from the whole trip is the first store we went in was called was the Brookside Pro Shop. We go into this golf pro shop. It's packed. There's like you can barely move. So it was already chaotic. It's the first store my dad and I went into. Um, but they had merch all over. It was like golf course merch with like just little rose bowl insignias um and it was kind of it was cool and i kept thinking like i I didn't know if i was going to buy merch or not i hadn't decided if i was going to buy it either there or if they won i'd buy it later like online and i heard some people like oh there's probably better merch in the fan fest and in the stadium and this stuff was not michigan or alabama branded it was just like golf course with rose bowl insignia looking back that's what i should have bought because I really just wanted like Rose Bowl stuff. Like there was cool like quarter zips and hats with just like the Rose Bowl. But again, I was naive. I was like, all right, let's just, we'll go find a different store and come back to this if we're going to buy stuff. So we walk out. um, The golf course is there. There's like a little booze tent, but it's still outside of the fan fest. We waited in that line for a little bit, but it was not moving. I was like, let's just go into the fan fest. So much impatience going on in this Anschutz group. It just you guys were just like just we gotta get wasn't... to the next thing like you just never you didn't smell the roses it sounds like <laughs> no we did we did the game was worth I was like why don't we... I was like let's just go into the fan fest because they're gonna have booze and food in there and the line's gonna be less because people are just coming to this one because it's the first thing they see which is I think accurate but the crazy thing about the fan fest is like that was your entry to the game once you went into the fan fest you could not come back outside like that was where you showed your ticket and when you walked through security. So the fan fest was like this big opening festival with like um, food and drink vendors and canopies to sit down. And then from there, you went into the gates. So you could not exit. So I could not go back to the pro shop. I was locked in the fan fest, which oh. sucked because I was like, oh, the merch in there was not what I wanted. It was big, like gaudy, massive Michigan M's with Bet. like Rose Bowl game, which was like. I, I might end up getting a shirt like that. I don't know, but I, w- I would much rather have had like a smaller, just like Rose Bowl quarter zip or Rose Bowl hat. That's what I would have wanted. Not a big like, yeah, bet Michigan job not done. Like I didn't need that. <laughs> um, There was this, we got some drinks. The seltzer of choice was Topo Chico for the Rose Bowl. We were going to get that. $17 for a big can. Wild pr- California pricing. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that is crazy. What we ended up, what we ended up doing was getting like a vodka lemonade from this brand called like Neft out of Austria. It was like a vodka. They had all these like niche vodka companies sponsoring and like alcohol companies sponsoring. That was seventeen dollars. I was like, I'd rather get a vodka lemonade and like vodka in it than just a Topo Chico. So we did that. Our food was food. We kind of we there were so many options. We ended up just going classic Midwestern. They had these half pound hot dogs, you which was insane. It was. They were so big. It was wild. You're Bonk. you're lucky, Alex. We we almost we almost got the gross ones. They had so they had a Michigan dog and an Alabama dog and then a regular dog. The Michigan dog had chili, onions, and cheese. And the Alabama dog had like sauerkraut, um, onions, and other stuff. We went the regular route. We did, oh, my dad's like chili at 11 a.m. I don't know about chili at 11 a.m. And I was like, yeah, I'm with that because I don't want to have a stomach problem. So we just got regular hot dogs with mustard and relish. They, they were good. I, I ate the whole thing. It was huge. I wish I took a picture. It was massive. Like how many <laughs> inches we took? <laughs> a, a foot? It was a foot. It was like a Subway sub, like thick. <laughs> oh, bonk. My, it was, sounds like it was worth it, Alex. Sounds like The bun couldn't. It. The bun couldn't handle the dog. I'll tell you that. We, were st- and we, had st- oh, we stood the up in the shade. The bun couldn't handle the dog. Uh, is this sexual? I also got – I no, I also got a Coors Light. I don't know what came over me, but I got a Coors this Light. It was all right. I should do that. Yeah. Piss water. Um, gates open at 1130. Went in right away. I was like, let's walk around. Because we hadn't seen the big Rose Bowl sign yet. I, I, I hadn't seen it because we were, came in on the other side. So we walk in. That's when I saw the thing for Luke. It was like exit 14, tunnel 14 right there. 
So we walked around. It was pretty empty in the concourse because people were still tailgating and whatnot. So you're like sober. Walked around, saw all the... How nice was the concourse? Um, It almost reminded me of like a Disney World walkway. It's a very old stadium. Yeah, it's, it's old because there's like not a, much on the outside of the stadium. Like it's not very visually appealing besides like the two ent- main entrances that say Rose Bowl on it. Um, yeah, so I was just 100%. wondering how it was nice like, underneath is it. I'm guessing not very. It was like a big, a big like ash vault. It almost felt like you're at a carnival. Big ash vault pathway around the whole thing and you're outside because it's there's it's nice because it's outside open air and then there's all these little booths like the Dos Equis booth uh, the vodka place had another booth um so i think they doll it uh, you ucla games are probably depressing but they doll it up big time they had more merch tents like it was a big deal um but it gets crowded fast like we we were fine we made a whole lap around took had people take our pictures in front took videos of like the different scenery um made our way around wanted to go see the seats Tunnel nine was our tunnel. The tunnel's cool, but if you, um, the one I had sent in the chat, you can kind of get a feel how like long and narrow they are. They are very tight tunnels. Um, and that's a story later about I almost had a panic attack because I thought I was going to miss all the pregame festivities of it, but I'll get to that. We go down, it's like probably noon at this point. So we're two hours to kick. We want to see our seats. We go down. It is a, a big thing of this day too was the weather. Everyone was like, Oh, it's going to be a little bit cloudy. I was hearing that like in California, it kind of feels colder than you think because of the ocean. If it's kind of the cold ocean air with the wind, it was piping hot. It was ridiculously warm. The sun was out all day. Beautiful weather just beating on your face though. And my dad and I like went down to the um, right where you could get as close as you could to the field and stood there, took a picture, like took videos. Um, the SEC network booth was right to our left. And then across the end zone was the ESPN one. So it was cool to see, like you could see Tebow down there. Um, all the other people on that game day set were down there. And then we, we went and sat in our seats just to see what it was like. And we were like, it's way too hot. We cannot sit here. So we went back to the concourse, went under the, um, that vodka brand. They had a big, like nice canopy with TVs watching the Oregon Liberty game. Um, so we just kind of chilled there. Talked to one guy who had been to every single Michigan home game since 1979, which is bananas. Like he was talking about all the other Rose Bowls he's been. So he was like, sick brag, dude. This is, this is wild. Um, and then went back to our seats around 115. And then it gets it are tight in there too. Tight seats. Like you are shoulders rushing the entire time, like your so elbows like stand in up the entire game. Yeah, I did. It was hard to sit down. It was so tight. Like yeah, I had him. I would the, let my that's dad. That's the one sit. thing I heard about the Rose Bowls. Like, yeah, you stand up the entire game. I mean, with bleacher seats in any stadium, it's just kind of like you don't know how respect. Like, are people going to abide by how much room they take up? Like, are you actually sitting on your number? Like, Which, your elbows like in people's like laps. Like, it was. It's tight, no doubt. In fairness, um, I mean, we're kind of used to it. I know those the elderly crowd would probably bitch and moan about it, but the biggest yeah. game of your life you can stand for a couple hours sit during halftime and um the sidelines so like the um, once you reach out the corner of the end zone it's all seat backs and then the end zones are all bleachers so we were technically like the uh, the section over was seat backs which was kind of like oh man seat back would kind of be sick but we were the bleacher section like just missed the cutoff um funny thing too was so the green canopy tent of the TV stand. You could probably think of that when you're watching on TV. It's like, it's kind of in your way. Like you're sitting there and it's like, this is an obstructed view. So I was panicking. I didn't, I assume they cranked that down during the game. Cause I don't remember seeing the tents up during past Rose Bowls, but I was like trying to Google it. Like, do they take these down? Like trying to find highlights from last year's Rose Bowl, like to see an end zone shot to make sure that's not going to be up the whole game, but you get like no service out there. Service was dog, dog shit, at least for Verizon. I couldn't, could barely text, couldn't pull things up. Yeah, when you sent your and Snapchat after like halftime, and it was like, <laughs> it was like eleven thirty here. I was like, yeah, so the like game halfway was through like the Texas over. Washington game, oh I was like, oh, Grant sent a holy shit a Snapchat, Grant and it was like, yeah, was it the was it one of the like booze ones? Like, it was no, it was saying that your like voice was already gone. It was like halftime or something, mm. and it was like I was already halfway through the Texas Washington game, and I was like, that probably sucked because clearly he tried saying <laughs> this four hours ago. Yeah, I gave up at one point. I, was like, I just can't. I'm just going to take videos and keep them to myself because you're not mm-hmm. going to send anything. Um, 
We get down to our seats. It's way more packed this time because people are filling in. It's probably like 1.30, kickoffs at 2.10. Um, it's like 1.35, 1.40, and I'm thirsty. Like for I had, a, I had a high noon, a Coors Light, vodka drink. I had an okay buzz, but I'm like, I'm not continuing to drink the whole game because I'm not going to be leaving out of these seats because it's a, a, a zoo. Like the concourse got so packed. So I had to go one last time to pee. So I was good for the game. One last time to get a water. And the bathroom is an absolute mess. It's like they have an entry and an exit for the men's and women's. But people made entry lines out of both doors. So you have a line going into the exit, a line going into the entrance. And like the exit had like these four urinals that they could kind of wrap around a corner that they could use before the people from the entry could tell. So it was, it was, it was all fair. Like people weren't necessarily cutting, but it was just chaotic. And then I had to wait in a while for that. And then I get out of that. It's probably 145. So I'm starting like, oh, I need to get to my seat. Like I need to be in my seat at like 155 for like the national anthem, the flyover, all that. And I'm at tunnel nine. It is out the whole tunnel into the concourse. I'm like, there's just no way I'm moving through this line. And I'm like starting to like get nervous. I'm like, I'm going to miss the flyover at the Rose Bowl. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to suck. Thankfully, worker comes around. She's got like a sign that says like tunnel full. And she says, tunnel 10 empty right now tunnel 10 is empty go that way if you want a shortcut i'm like yes <laughs> start walking fast with this other guy around the corner tunnel 10 she wasn't lying wide open walk straight through then cut left um around like the little bowl to get to my section so i'm back in my seats um sun's beaming down good mix of michigan and alabama fans around us um there's alabama fans to our left not immediate left immediate left is michigan immediate right next to my dad i think was bama and then behind us was a michigan fan it was all scattered because we were kind of like where their fans started to cut off into michigan fans um but it was scattered i'm trying to think of other memorable things leading up dude your lead up before like the it was it was more like panic like it's this than anything awful. No, I think like the initial shock of like just seeing the pregame was awesome. And then like after that, it was like we got to kill an hour because we were in there so early. You're not going to sit in your seat. The sun, if you sit on where we sat, the sun is just in your eyeballs. And my dad, he's a huge sunglasses guy. I'm not. He didn't bring his sunglasses on the trip. He's like, I don't think I'm going to need them. I was like, I bet you wish you had those. He's like, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> like, he, he had a hat though, thankfully. I had nothing. I just, the whole first half, I just sat like this, which is, I don't mind doing it. It didn't bother me that much. Um, but that's a pro tip. If you sit on the visitor or like that side away from the press box, you got to have sunglasses or a hat because it is in your eyeballs until halftime because then it goes behind the press box, which is sweet. Um, flyover, electric factory, stealth bomber. You could hear it coming in. Um, Looks sick. They shoot off fireworks as it goes over. Dude, awesome. that's the one gripe I have. Like, I think you should mm. ban fireworks field level during pregame. Because mm. it gets smoky? Because it gets smoky. It did get smoky. Like, I had a heart attack. Out, like outside the stadium or like right on the edge or like at the top of the stadium, fine. But field level, no. Ban them. Can't have it. Big fireworks game in general. Uh, it was like one... 1 p.m. We're in the vodka tent. They start shooting off fireworks outside the stadium. I thought there was a like, gunshots. Like I was, I, I, like I was like, why are they shooting off fireworks at 1 p.m.? Like are you having? You had so much stress kids. during this day. I no they're testing no. them out, Grant. They're testing them out. Testing them out. It, it, I'm just recounting the things. But then, did you have well, yeah, fun? The game was stressful. So, oh yeah, it was sweet. All right, because if someone's gonna cool. listen to this recap, they're gonna be like. Do I want to go to the Rose Bowl if my team makes it? No, I think you just got to know you're getting into like a circus. A it, is, mess. it is a beast of an event. The I heard Peach Bowl recap was incredible. The Rose Bowl recap? <laughs> Some are asking. Well, you're there for the game. There's people I heard complaining later that they said like they missed parts of the game because they just couldn't yeah, get in. Yeah, this is stressing me Like out. you just have to – you just got to get in. You just got to be in early. Feet be on early. the ground, in there early, know where your seat's at, know what tunnels to go in, and you're good. But we're all in. Um, Michigan people, like I said, around us, good vibes. First play of the game, just complete panic that we oh threw a pick. Gosh. And it was like TCU all over. I was hoping. <laughs> and Alabama, 
they're like fans. They were like had this, you know, the swagger to them. Um, very familiar with their fight song now. The da 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 da. Super catchy. That just starts playing, and Alabama fans are like laughing after that pick. I'm like, oh my god! Like we are just about to get our doors <laughs> blown off in the Rose Bowl. JJ, everybody, just turned everybody over city. got that. Um, since I'm on it, I'm going to get my other gripe out. The only other downside of the Rose Bowl is you just have no clue what's going on. They have two video They're boards. S- One was behind so our head. Small. I noticed that on TV. They're tiny. You can't even see them. The one behind our head. So we had to turn around every time. And then there's one to your left that's tiny. The other end is just the old school clock with the scoreboard. There's no, the world we are looking at, there was none. And like a play like that, they give you like one replay wide shot. They don't zoom in on anything. You just have no idea like what's actually happening. You're like basing off of crowd reaction. And if you can see it with your eyes. So that is one thing to know, like you're not getting more than one replay. If that, and like on the penalties, like a lot of penalties, they don't like the unnecessary roughness that Bredesen had number 44, no idea what he did until I saw on TV later. Like they don't show any of that stuff. They just, they go to like fan shots and like show people like dancing. <laughs> Rose Bowl like, sucks. I what's happening. No, no, it's, it's Alex. It's majestic. Kidding. And then, and then, um, I'm just trying to think of other parts of the game. Um, I was from the beginning. I was all over their snapper, the center, because in the iron bowl, I watched him snap poorly for most of the game. And then if you remember right, when they were driving, uh, he snapped it under Milrose's legs, 20 yards back. And that's how they got into fourth and 31. Dude, he's so I was telling terrible. Michigan fans earlier. I was like, I was like, this center is going to give him fits. I pointed out earlier. I was like, look at Milrow has to bend down every snap. Like, I actually could not believe how bad of a center. That is Alabama's that starting really center, and he cannot hard. snap a football. I I promise I can snap a football better. I'm not going to block better. It was not- he must be the greatest blocker of all time because there's no reason that guy should be on the field. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I guess. Or he's just like all. I don't know. Dude, he can't I, snap. I it was all knew. game long. And it, the thing is, it's been a problem for games because I remember watching the first half of the SEC game and he was his snaps are just low. Like Noro has to bend his knee every time that he gets a snap. And you watch JJ. JJ catches it right here. Most quarterbacks play. do. Milrow's always – it was insane. So I was on that early. I knew that was going to be um, a big thing. I'm trying to think of my behavior. Like I was definitely like a maniac in terms of like, like that. <laughs> Not like in a mean way, but just so nervous and like couldn't stop talking and was like – Thankfully, my ride or die guy, Michigan guy behind me, he's probably a little bit older than me. But when we were, I, I did the, the, I kept thinking of the TikTok that you guys sent of that one kid that just yells. I mean, that was me the whole game. Every single. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I did. So you had to cover in the first half, you had to cover your eyes. So I, I would just sit like this and go, oh, like every play. And. As soon as I would start doing it, the guy behind me would do it. So, like, we were just – we were brothers in arms. Like, he wasn't going to let me be the only one yelling. Like, my dad wouldn't yell until, like, third down, and people wouldn't yell until third down. I was like, no, it's the Rose Bowl. I'm yelling. Did you bring your lines? Did you know Evan is not an O guy? He just doesn't do it. I've watched a lot of football games with Evan, and I feel like you really never do it. I don't really scream that loud. I scream after the play. Evan only yells at coaches. He does not scream during the play. (laughs) I cross my arms and I stand and stare. Yeah, like, that is. Dude, guy it's all game. F- F's up. All game. Yes. Uh, I'm the – in this game, I was the annoying – I clap too. I clap the big whole – like, I go, oh, just clap. I'm a big clapper. Clap. Just games. making noise. Grant's is out there making noise. He's hoping for the noise. win. Well, because when what Alabama was out in Michigan uh, won the football game. <laughs> That's what uh, Grant was asking. Uh, uh, Alabama – when Alabama was on defense, there was a couple of probably like kids in their mid twenties back to our right. And they were loud. Their whole group would go, Oh, and I was like, we have like, we gotta be yelling when we're on defense. We can't, we just gotta be screaming. And I was just, Oh, I didn't say any, like anything vulgar. Like I was very, I was just more like, I'm trying to think of the things. Like I just kept screaming, run the damn ball. When we were just bullying them, I was like, just run the football. Um, I punched you towards the end. I kept saying, like, give us one, Jalen. Give us a turnover. Just, like, yelling it. You did. <laughs> then, you know, um, like in hockey, you know how they chant a goalie's name? Yes. Like, to try to rattle him. So, 
in the sense of the O, after Jalen fumbled, like every time my defense, I go, Milrow, and I would just scream that into my O, like every single play. Like, just, so like, I would have despised it. Give us another one. <laughs> no, but I made friends with the Alabama guy behind me because their freshman safety, Caleb Downs, number two, absolute dog, like all American. Oh, no, no, we, we, we know. Run stuffing. We watched the football game. <laughs> and I was like, look at him, and I was just like, because he returns punts too. I was like, God, that kid is so good. Yeah, he we were just talking about good. Caleb Downs. So I, I made some respect. What, thankfully for me, there was a guy in front of us, super obnoxious to the right, a Michigan fan, like just getting hammered on Coors Lights and his group snuck a vape pen in or a weed pen in. So they're hitting their weed pen. And this guy was, he was towing a fine line where he made friends with all the Alabama fans, but it could have been bad if he wasn't friendly because he was just saying vulgar stuff. He was like, <laughs> Jalen Milrow pays for porn. <laughs> like just screaming out vulgar things at the Rose Bowl. He did He did make a lot of friends, but he made what I did um, seem mild. My one, I guess, toxic trait fan that I've realized in both the Iron Bowl and this game, if you give me bleachers, like bleachers, and there's a big play, I stand up on the bleacher in front of me and probably block like the view of the people behind me. <laughs> That's a problem. So, like, when you're a grown-ass man. You cannot be doing that. When Roman like caught a pass or Blake like uh, when the fumble happened when Milrow dropped the ball I'm just on the bleachers going ball <laughs> ball just like need that to your be girlfriend would have despised your ex in this game despised them she has said on record I multiple don't... times about things like this she would have hated every second with it <laughs> every second but I, great you I sound like a maniac it's a different. I was. I was just. I was just trying to will them to victory. You did, but, but if, in the context of the game, like everyone's yelling things. They they started a when we missed the field goal. The Alabama fans started a "You miss Moody" chant, which was electric because, like, yes, we do miss Moody. Very bad. Crazy. They knew um, that. Oh yeah, it was a lot. Of, there was a lot of ball knowers around us. Like people, like when Rayshon Benny went down, like the guy to my left, there was an older guy. He like knew exactly who he was. Like, oh yeah, second string. Like that hurts, but it's not like. Mason Alabama Grammer, football fan crazy. No, no, he was a Michigan fan that knew. Ray oh, Benny. let's just say if an Alabama fan knew who Rayshon Benny was, good for them. Like that's insane. Yeah. Um. A lot of I apologize to the dude to my left once because the first he was a Michigan fan. The first snap that they uh, shot low went past Milro, and I was just that was ball, 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 and I realized I was just repeating it. And with how close you're on the Rose Bowl, I was like, oh, I'm sorry if that was too close to your ear. And he's like, no, you're fine. You're totally fine. And I was like, I just really wanted us to fall on that. <laughs> he's like, no, we you were a one. maniac in the stadium. Maniac. I was just talking. Man- I, I have then- witnessed this, Grant, and I did not expect it to ever be in a public setting. But it is. it sounds like it was out in full force. It's just a fan. I, I think you're all No. Like, I've watched games with you. And how- in a living room where you can just do whatever you want. And it sounds like that is what you just did in the Rose Bowl. And as someone who's observed it, I'd have, I'd be raising some eyebrows <laughs> if I was there. The, but I couldn't move as much. Right. Yes. But the standing on the bleachers in I front just, of you screaming ball, ball, ball. Oh, like yeah. That is just yep. full on nutty. That was my move. My move was definitely just I need to get a look, uh, the best look in the house at this place. So I just stay on the bleacher. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. Move. It's kind of like leaning, leaning your seat back on a plane that the people behind you, like, hey, you step on the bleacher, step on my bleacher, and we'll just both be on the bleachers. <laughs> Funny too. Speaking of sitting and standing, uh, after the first TV timeout, um, the front rows were still standing, and a group to the right sat down, and they started a down in front chant. Just completely rejected. I was like, no, there's no shot. We're sitting down at the Rose Bowl. You're just going to stand on your feet the entire game. So just get used to it. You can sit down at halftime if you want. But I, I appreciate the front row for not bending the knee and being, no, we're standing the entire game. Fair. I would too. So credit to them. Um, If the TV cameras ever got me after our mistakes, I would have been full surrender not. Cobra. I was like, searching. I, think I, just had Dude, I was a ball hawk looking for you. I was searching. Ball I just <laughs> I was like, I need when, a, a surrender when, uh, Cobra Grant. I need that's one. That's all I wanted. I just said, I was like, I want to see Grant and Larry's just mean mug after like a negative. Because Evan got caught surrender Cobra on ESPN. So I didn't surrender. Wow, but I was you were depressed. A kid 
Yeah, I was looking up at the, the video sign. board of watching us get schooled, and a little kid, a seven year old, has a <laughs> go buck sign right in front of my face. That's all time. <laughs> I needed Grant to get caught like that. I had my hands like on my head when Thaw muffed that punt. Mind you, that's at the other end zone, so no replays. I had no idea how close it was to being a safety. I was just praying I didn't see the ref's hands go up, just praying. It, and when they said like on the dude, one, was I was so like, close. close. <laughs> and who is that I did, guy? They did, again? Back up. Who, who he he returned hits? puns in the beginning of the year and then got benched. I remember because him. he's like, I was like they the, brought I, this kid out. The ironic. I don't know who Thaw. The is. ironic thing. I was like, the ironic thing is, is that he's supposed to be the sure hands guy. No. Like he's the guy that will just fair catch and will not return it. He hadn't muffed the he hadn't muffed the punt all year. Samaj had neither. They both muffed punts. Michigan's um, asses were puckering hard. Your in special the, teams. The fourth, and I was third, about fourth, fourth quarter. So we'll get into the game a little bit right here. I was thinking about this during the game. You know, I saw a couple mishaps on special teams in the Texas Washington game too. Um, they muffed a punt. Um. And they're like, oh, special teams playing big role. And I was thinking, I was like, if you're a coach, I think they kind of just like go through special teams, but but they don't dissect it like the X's and O's of that part. They don't, the attention to detail for special teams, I think gets overlooked a little bit based off of your program and your coaching philosophy because everybody's so heavy on X's and O's on offense and defense. Kalen DeBoer said that Mm -hmm. they were very focused on it pregame. In his, well, it did not look like in it. his interview. He he actually brought up special teams. I'm like, this guy is dialed in to special teams. And I, in my head, I was like, this game is not, not going to matter. And then I watched the Michigan game and all the <laughs> special teams problems. And I was like, holy shit, maybe maybe will. And missing when you mess up an extra point early in the game, it's the worst feeling that's because you, like you, you never take a breath. That's all you think. When about, we were though. scoring to tie it, I was like, "We're we're screwed. Like we're gonna miss this. This is gonna go poorly." I need to find it. I need to find a when text that, that someone punt, sent me when that happened. When he muffed that punt, the the second one, my hands were on my head. I was like looking at the sky, just like at like I was like, "What are we doing? Like what are we doing?" I was in disbelief. That we actually like try to field a punt inside the ten and muffed it and almost lost the Rose Bowl on like this one of the dumb it would be like the dumbest play of all time. Chris Fowler did say stupid. I don't know if you heard it, Grant, but Chris Fowler said this this that play in Michigan history almost went down to infamy. So how like, oh my god credit to credit to him worse, for getting out of the end zone and not taking the safety and how he absorbed that he hit he got murdered, dude. <laughs> I watched. <laughs> Because I and Chris and I couldn't Kirk see it. even said that he's like, oh, they got hit, and then they kept on showing the replay. And Kirk's and like, Kirk holy, oh, it got smacked. <laughs> also, this is a text that I received from a Michigan I, fan during the uh, special teams debacle. So, punt, the punt muff had already happened, and then the snap had just happened, and the text was, "We're so stupid, it's unbelievable." Yep, 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 yep. Get eighty two off. He has the yips. This is like a four text string we of did. like everyone freaking out about special teams, and in my head I was like, ah, did he get? It was TCU. Did what? what was I don't TCU know. The over I don't know the freshman's name. So much Morgan. I'm drawn, He's from Michigan. Yes, Morgan. Did he get benched for punts because he dropped that slant pass? No, I don't know. Because if I don't he know did, that is a wild. Out. That is a wall. No, Evan, he muffed a punt already. already. But yeah, then he but then he also was fielded like. Four other yeah, punts. but he was so, like, he was my thing. questionably fielding punts where he could have just let go. I think that was the problem. Like he was fielding punts my inside the five yard is, line. Like, I think re- re- returning punter, 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 just punter. catching a punt is the most under like appreciated like hard thing to do in all of sports. I have two career punt mm-hmm. returns in my and throwing life. in a guy that is cold off the bench, off the yeah. bench is a wild bananas move. I was stunned. Especially I, I that time in place. I think he got benched because he dropped a perfect slant pass. I was making fun of JJ. I was like, he can't throw. That's not an NFL throw. Then they showed the replay. It is a perfect pass on a slant, shoulder height, through his right hands. here, right through his hands. I was I was mad at that. I, I was, was surprised how much oh Michigan got him involved. I how good of a ball Tyler that was Morris that he drops that kid. Tyler Morris touchdown was crazy. Dude, he just caught it I and can't just believe that kid scored in the disappeared from everyone. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? And I knew who he was because of you. And I was and like, I thought he has four three speed. Like he's running past these Alabama players. <laughs> I thought for sure he's gonna fumble when he extended too. Because like, I was thinking about CD Lamb, and I was like, just hold on to the football when he crossed the pylon, please, for the love of God. He did. Um, I almost like in the airport when we got back after the game. 
I was so like sick to my stomach watching the Thaw replay because I didn't know how hard he got hit. I was like, I cannot believe that kid did not fumble that. Crazy. That because you didn't see the replay. I just knew we were on the one. And then we're like in shotgun on the other end of the field. Like, we're panicking back. Dude, we're why did you guys call the timeout? And then what we called timeout to, to run what another play. What was Jimmy doing? Alabama you could have ran like, the what, cl- what the hell? Clock we were like, what the out, hell? And he called a timeout. Even Kirk was like, what are they doing? Jesus. Also, another moment that did not translate until I got to the airport. The trick play that JJ caught a one-handed pass and then threw it. I Incredibly underrated. It was nearly like a fumble. Disaster. Okay, well, Dallas not, was not in his face. Passer. No, he not, not, not even close to roughing after the play. passer. It's just a silent shot of Jim just yelling, like, where's the flag? That was not roughing the passer. I thought he, I thought he broke his shoulder when he got up. I thought the collarbone was done. I wonder what the wind knocked out. The shoulder yeah. play. He got the wind knocked out of him because he like landed on his hands or he landed on, and like he they showed the replay and he instantly grabs his thumb. He got the wind knocked out of him. Doesn't help that he had a whole chunk of sod hanging out of his helmet too. Yeah, I cannot believe he caught that and then got it off. Like one thing to catch it and then just get sacked by Dallas Turner. The fact he got it off, got for it off, and also that dude was wide open is ridiculous. That he was open? Yeah, like the 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 things that happened, like Donovan Edwards' bad pass, like JJ catches oh, it. Oh, that he was still and open. And that kid is still that far open. Yeah, I don't like, know. Like it what, wasn't any time what like, Alabama was doing on that. It wasn't a half a second play. This was like a two, three second play, like holy crap, Michigan's about to just botch this. I thought for like, sure, like it was gonna end up Alabama ball, and then it turned into that. I was like, it's Michigan stay. And then at the same time, another play that happened when the ball like it barely gets tipped, but I noticed it live. It gets tipped out of JJ's hands and it's going to Roman Wilson, I think. Roman Wilson's number one, right? Yeah, the, the, pass ca- the catch on yeah, the last Yeah, it's drive. going towards him. Insane. All the Alabama dude had to do was just either A, blow up Roman Wilson or step in front and he takes some weird shit angle. And he's like away from the ball and Roman Wilson just glides in the air and catches it. I didn't even know he could jump that high. And I was like, holy shit, Michigan's going to win this game. Like everything is I going to believe in these moments. I can't believe that ball got tipped, one, because I didn't see it live. And two, the fact that the spiral stayed, didn't break stayed. at all. I've never seen a ball just, get just, tipped. It just floated. It just uh, that's all it did. It moved up a different plane. It's insane. Its trajectory just moved up a different plane from that tip. That's all it did. And he caught it and threw a juke move on a guy to get to like the five. I don't. I, that was one of the most absurd. Athletic that was one of the I've most disgusting seen. knee injuries I almost saw. That was so gross. They kept on showing replays of Roman Wilson. His legs stopped on the sideline. And I was like, oh my God, he's injured. Oh, really? Yes. I didn't ask you that. Do not wow. watch the replay of that on the sideline. He was fine. He scored a touchdown. He's running up the sideline, gets pushed out of bounds, and then he like he tries to like, stop, and his leg just like... I was like, well, he's done. He gets off, and I was like, there, there's no way he's like not hurt. And well, he scored in two plays later, so... I have to give credit. Michigan made some, um, pl- some plays that I did not think they'd do after they were like full-on choking. So they called a couple of trick plays. I did say to Alex and Cody, um, I did not like your flea flicker. I hated it too. I did it. not think you needed to do that. Like the time and place and like where you were at on the field, that's more of like a you're in your own territory kind of play. Could just be like the room to work. Um, like you needed points in that drive and like that situation. I get it was wide open. I do get that. But I think at that time, like you're built on Michigan of running just traditional plays and run power down their throat. <laughs> Um, the kind of trick plays are like catch them off guard. I know I get that, but where you were at, you're on the plus side territory. I just didn't think they needed it. Yeah, it was like second and five. I did. Was, I also but didn't to think your, they needed it either. I thought they were fine. To your point, Alex, we've it reminded me of our Ben Johnson conversation. So I tried to give it the benefit of the doubt. It was it was the same route combo as the trick play to uh, earlier. It was two crossers in the front. No, it was open. open for at least we know it was yards. open. It's just. Oh, Why not just me, run was, a normal pass? It was like you're, but it was to your point though with the Ben Johnson one that I got on about Amonra. It's like, it, like Blake Corm has never messed. They've done that play I, multiple I, times. The, I don't even care that didn't work, and it was. I just wouldn't. I don't think that was the time to call it. I thought Michigan it got cute a couple games. times. I guess it is. Another one, like when Orgy came in and everybody in the world knew that he was finally going to throw a pass. Like everybody the ball. in the was bad, world I was saying this, knew what ball. was going to happen. I was saying this. And then that was the route, a like, running back just sprinting out? Like a, a it's, on Terry and Arnold. Yeah, it's the run right play. But if you were just watching, if any like typical coach was watching, it's like, okay, first of all, they said, okay, it's probably going to be a pass here. But the time it took for the play to get in, 
the time it took for him to say the play in the huddle and then he him looks looking like back to the sideline over and oh over God, again. It it's not like he repeated a like play that like they're used to running over and over again. Obviously, there was something extra to it, so it was just too too obvious. It was incredible. Everybody, yeah. the booth was even. They're like, "Yeah, he's he's probably passing here." And then then they did, and Kirk was <laughs> like, "Yeah, well, that was pretty obvious. If we knew it, I'm sure Nick Saban <laughs> knew it." I don't think Nick Saban the, did um, know it the way that he coached. Kid is a kid. Good moments. I'm thinking of the stretch of. He did stretch of plays time. that like the motion of the game, the beginning when Michigan was ripped off four sacks on the first six dropbacks, I, that was euphoria. Like, Evan we and like, Cody like, said, we're just game. dominating their team. I said, this is, <laughs> I was this like, is like bullshit. this is they're They're going to figure insane. out. Was men was, I was like, this is, some point. but Alabama wasn't doing anything to adjust. To no, they waited so did, long to adjust. adjust. They did adjust, but it took him two quarters. We were screaming a little inside in the first quarter of like, hey, you got to move the pocket for Milro, get him a little bit running, set up for him to throw, throw the bombs. And they do the like complete opposite. They were like trying to take their big shots deep first, but you need time to do that. The same like even said at halftime when Laura Rutledge like interviewed him. He was like, yeah, we need to move the pocket around. We need to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, why the thing you do it for an entire quarter? I just, I cannot believe I watched that. I was very surprised. Was I did not expect not ready for the Alabama moment. to get out coached. Not ready for the moment. No, no, it was wild. Um, and a little backstory or behind the scenes is Michigan came out of the last halftime locker room with like five minutes to go, um, which is like around a little early. I think they were just like, let's just keep playing us. I'm sure they made little adjustments, but like, let's just keep doing what we're doing and clean it up. Alabama came out with like a minute left. Maybe. They like they went to the wire in terms of like dialing had it figured things out. up and. Yeah, like the first half really was Michigan dominated that's the what I, that's important what I parts said. of the I game, Michigan but just kept messing half. up. Just kept – like realistically, if we step back all the points, Alabama should have had a field goal maybe at half. The, the muff punt was, gifted them the seven because they, they weren't scored, moving yeah. the ball. And then throughout the whole game, we really gave up. We left 11 points for them on the board because we missed a field goal, missed the extra point, gave up the muff punt. They – left seven points for us because they were moving the ball and then the, the center had two bad snaps in a row. Yeah. And so that was seven. They were going to score on that drive for sure. At least three points. I think that they was were the moving first drive of easily. the third quarter, wasn't it, when they botched all those snaps? Yeah, and then they scored the next drive. It, it was a – yeah. And in terms of the game flow, like they owned the third quarter and this is – I don't think they showed this on TV. They did like t- a song for each team or the PA system with the light show. They did Mr. Brightside for Michigan. They did did Um, show it, though. With like four minutes to go in the third quarter, Michigan's still up 13 to 10 at this point. So it's like people are lively. And then at that point, Alabama starts moving the ball. I think they were either about to score or just did. I think it was 17-13 going into the fourth quarter, and they played Dixieland Delight for them. I was like, there's right before they scored. They scored right the start the fourth quarter, I think. Yeah. They flick the. They're doing the light show. They're playing Dixieland Delight, and I've never heard Alabama fans sing it. They have this whole like remix of it where they yell certain things out. Um, like when the thing goes, it's like it's like Auburn and LSU and Tennessee too, and then they're all stomping their boots on the grandstands, and it's loud. It, and all the pom poms are going. I was like, we are losing. Grandstand had to be just like, yeah, we're not making it out of here alive. No, I was I was gonna take a video because it was so. I looked at my dad. I was like, "This is so much better than Mr. Brightside. This is electric." And I was gonna take a video, but I didn't want to have that like sad memory of them just blowing. That's like when I saw Texas Tech phone. come out in the Final Four. The coolest, coolest thing I've ever mm. seen. Yeah, they do this. Like, it's like a funny remix because they're like, "I'll spend my dollar," and they're like, "On beer," and they're just like vi- they're vibing in the Rose Bowl. I'm like, "We're just about to we're about to lose." And then, although it didn't lead to points, the Jalen Miller fumble, the ball call off the San Gabriel Mountains from my mouth, just screamed ball. And the fact that Josh Wallace fell on that inbounds, huge. And I know again, they did not score wasted opportunity. They missed the field goal there, but like Alabama's driving again. They're going to be up like twenty. It was about to be over. The fact that they at least he like had the at least they triple fumbled option it. on that play. You call that play for a triple option. It's a modern day triple option. And he didn't throw the ball. I thought Jalen Miller played his like, like, worst game of the season. Like he looks on so the top of the TV. So game. but to Grant's Could not left, throw. left sideline, they had a wide receiver, triple option. Read, run, and put the outside linebacker in a bind. They did that. Miller decided not to throw the ball and keep it instead. And that's when he had the transfer problem. Boom. Perfect punch out. 
started like falling down his, too. Yeah, he was stumbling. Like, his was ball security tripping. was terrible. He he like slid down and, on a third down, like three yards short. And I was yeah. like, the second quarter. That, when I saw I that, I was like, this, I stood up. This is not happening for Alabama because I don't know what he's. I doing. think he got. I think he got called out after that because some of the quarterback runs he would just ran full Dude, speed. Dude, there was one passed. like third and thirty, and he was a QB draw, and he just lowered his shoulder, and got <laughs> abused. I'm like, someone, someone told him, Rod, Rod, like Moore, you better run hard. Rod Moore blew him up <laughs> so, on that play. I remember that. that he awesome. slid down. He could have got that first down that he slid down on. Yeah, he didn't even slide forward though. Like he like, like died in like over your short. Like all right, yeah, he stopped, slid, and then he went, the ball went backwards. Yeah, dude, he he looked. Like a completely different quarterback. Like tentative, scared. He's probably pissed at his center because he's the worst center I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I wouldn't. Give that. Michigan credit, though. Tommy Reese. And then, I can't get over it. I can't go. I get Michigan absolute credit. I mean, their defense line controlled the entire Alabama. What Alabama could do offensively. And Grant was yeah. hitting the nail on the head. He said this defensive line is like our best unit. And they were. Well, to the speaking, it's hard to tell. It's, it's hard to tell in the Big Ten play. It, it just is. Yeah, because – Big Ten's so shitty, against, but we we did learn that Michigan C line is good. Michigan C line was, and it, it showed, and because they said the first five sacks were by five different players. Now Michigan was dialing up like some extensive pressures in the game, like they were blitzing a lot. Early. Yeah, they got Mike Barrett on a free blitz, and they Alabama's like, blitz. what are like the biggest no biggest adjustments thing. at all at the line like before the play they just given up free runs for linebackers to murder Milrow. i'm like who who is adjusting thing things is, no one is communication alabama's offense line didn't communicate quarterback communication because they're all fresh protection and then alabama's defense michigan was just running basic two level three level crossing concepts and obviously their motion actually helped Michigan motion more motion than anybody. Was crazy. Jay Johnson never oh knew God. what a motion was before the game. <laughs> he probably still doesn't know afterwards. Um, but the motion, miscommunication, run crossing routes, man on man, get a lot, somebody on a linebacker or somebody on a favorable matchup that you like. I thought overall Alabama's defense the, uh, though. It was completely opposite of what we thought. We thought the tight ends had to have a big game. I know they caught some passes here and there with some big drives, but it was your role player, wide receivers that we thought there's no way in how they could do and- anything. Throwing to Corum, like we the, we schemed up some open the one fourth down that Corum got like to you, forty uh, yards on. You got to block in the back to bring it back a little, but like yeah, that was a nice play call. That block in yeah. the back, that block in the back made but me then, laugh like, so much. Oh my gosh, it made me so happy. Oh, I have a story. I have a story. I'll just say I, I that was like down our line, and I like Corum's running. I'm on the bleachers again. Big play. I'm up. I'm like oh my god. I'm like looking at Roman Wilson, and I'm like, there's just like no. It was in slow motion. Like, there's no way he touches this guy. He right? blew like, him up. There's no, and he does. I'm, I just, uh, I, I was, was just, just like, I cannot believe he did that. I was laughing of how obvious it was. He didn't like. He tried to like graze him on the side. It was as clear as dude on TV. You, draw up, like, you just see him like you don't see him on the <laughs> screen at all, and then it just comes in and just murders a guy in the back, and we're like, and three flags happening? get thrown. <laughs> Dude, and also, so this is just – I was just too caught up in the moment. I – shame on me for having like a stats background. I was scrambling like the difference between college. I, I assumed it was an other spot and we had the first down. But like all the Alabama players were signaling it was going to be fourth down. And I'm like, I think they're wrong. I think we had enough to get the first down. But you couldn't tell again because of the lack of like plays. I was like clenching, clenching that we were going to get a first down still. And they did. And I, I like – like. My dad and other Michigan fans were like upset at Roman. I'm like, hey, at least we got the first down yeah, to the 50. Like, was, I, I don't care. He still got it it's by a, 20. A, the penalty is from the spot of the the penalty is from the spot of the foul. Yeah. So like, and you get the first result down of the huge. play is a first down. Penalty the fouler was immediately the like, the yeah, that's a penalty, but it definitely still be a first down. Nothing to worry about. Blah blah blah. So he was all over it. Yeah. Um. But in terms of the scheme, like Corum's first touchdown on the pass was wide open. Samaj was pretty open. You two guys and then open Roman play. Wilson to tie was wide open. Yeah, Cornelius was as well. But like those plays and like it hit me in person how much we motion and I, shift. I was is calling insane. out that your touchdown. Insane I was calling out that Loveland, I think it was Loveland, was going to leak out the other way. And then you ran it for Wilson on the back because he motion, kept on motion and you hadn't done it once. I was like, down on the goal line, somebody's going to leak out. Somebody's going to slip. And I was like, it's going to be Loveland on this time. But you ran it near our TV near side. You're away from you, Grant. Um, for Wilson on that one, it was. I mean, JJ had a couple of sweet throws, but a lot of his plays were wide so it was open. Not the really one JJ the throws that stand out was. I mean, I thought he played incredible. I don't. I think know he, he had some mistakes, MVP, but though. he played. Awesome. I don't think he was like the the yeah. reason. 
He I helps. thought Corum deserved the MVP. Sure. I thought Corum deserved the MVP just based off of that last touchdown run. I thought your defense was MB- the MVP yeah. of the game. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't say you one hundred percent JJ. He did. Grant, how do well, you there's feel one throw he made that I have his shoes on the first drive. Yeah, I, I thought about oh, you I immediately. Thought, that like, was right Grant's in front guy. of you too. One on one, make the tackle, Grant's guy, and he missed. That's himself. when I thought we were uh, avalanching, like we muffed the punt. Yep. That happened. I'm like, oh wow, and Mike, Mike can't wrap up. And he didn't even have a chance. That was like spiral city in the contact. He's got juked out of his shoes. No. He made a, some good plays yeah. later too. He threw the hammer down, or he hit a home run. He also he had the game-winning tackle. Back, but he was in there. It was really, it was Josiah Stewart blew up the right tackle into yes. the court. Well, I don't know what that play call was, but but again, it was a bad Jesus. snap. Bad snap. Well, bad I think call, I've seen everything. it was supposed to be an RPO. It was the worst RPO snap of was all open. time, and Milrow was already running around like playing terrible, tentative garbage, and just got him. It's like, oh my god, got to run forward. No chance. But back to the stretch of the game, kind of thinking chronologically of the experience too. So you had the Jalen Miller fumble, and then there was another special teams debacle where we miss a field goal bad, and then they make a fit. Their kicker was amazing. I love that. Two fifty yard plus. He's the most, in the he's the most points and uh, I'm in Honolulu now. Most points ever, dude. He nailed so those fifty. He yards. drills that like perfect down nailed the middle, them. like incredible. That second one. He it had to draw like when it came off the leg, I was like, Oh my god, he pushed it right and they had the perfect draw. Like, and this is a nice draw you yeah. have on your driver, and he came right back in, yeah. split the middle. So I was like, Wow, that's good. I'm sorry, Grant. Um, I did call that your kicker was gonna miss. I was like, I don't trust this guy with the 10 foot pole. Oh, I knew your kicker was gonna miss. Your kicker stays. Did it get tipped at all, or it was no, a straight guard? Just, gar- just an absolute your kicker sucks. I was pointing already. Yeah. When you were up, I was they like, were he's missing it left. Because he's what you try to do, long kicks, kickers try to do, they try to overpower it. What do you do when you overpower it? You pull it. Just like a driver. Just like your driver. Swing too hard, <laughs> you're going to hit it up. Um, so then you tra- you fast forward to that last drive. We already talked about the big plays of it, but the fact the five minutes left, essentially, 75 yards, when they hadn't done anything in the second half, I just – really was surreal to watch because I was thinking about this era of Michigan football. They're typically the team that kind of like grabs the lead late and then they squeeze it out with running drives. The fact that they were down seven to Bama with five minutes to go when they hit fourth and two, we had three timeouts left around three minutes. I was discussing with people in the stands. Like I don't mind punting because our defense has been so good. And one guy goes, no, it was on your own. One guy was like, we got to go. And I was like, it's on the 33 yard line. Like it's the game. If you don't, I thought that was going to be the, at the very least, the field goal up of the game. That was going to be the end. Like the decision to go. I think in that situation, Jim was kind of almost in a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because if you do go for it, don't get it. Everyone's going to bitch and moan. If you do go for it, and or if you do punt it, I guess I should say, if you go for it and don't get it, or if you punt it, and then all they had to do is get one first down, um, you're basically like dead to rights. I actually don't mind it was, going for it. I don't know. If you don't get it, the game's over. I thought they were just going to try to draw them off. I had That no fourth down was the corn catch, snap, right? Yes. If you don't get yeah. that, then yes, you because lose. they ran that same concept the play before. They run like that same concept of the play before. Corum did leak out like the play before. Clearly, they saw something and said, hey, this is going to work. Went right back to it. And it's just risky because we come, we you, as Michigan State fans, we the think back to Corum in the 2021 game, drops that wide open touchdown swing pass. He's not known as the pass catcher. The, like credit to him for looking those. You see running backs drop stuff like that all the time. Drop passes that they, they turn their head upfield all the time. Credit to him for looking both those in, collecting it, and then making moves downfield. Um, and then it was so infuriating. I'm glad they did it. But we talked all week about J.J. McCarthy has to run the football. I, I don't care if it puts his, uh, you know, on the line. Like, this is the game to do it. They run him for 16 yards on the next play. It looked beautiful. Read, op- read option, kept it, pulling guards, counterplay. Like, where was that the rest of the game when we were in a lull? in the second half, but they pulled it oh out God, then. Was he gets almost 20 counter. yards. I was screaming counter on this play action. On that play. It was so <laughs> when stupid. They, when they pulled. Yes, I was like, this is going to be a counter. It was beautiful. The jet motion. Uh, I think Corn was on the same play side, and I was like, dude, this is a scream counter. Bullshit. And I, I'll say this. This is my point I want to make about the refs. Most times they call that 15 yards. 
but I do respect how off hand they were in that game. They didn't call really anything. And I do appreciate that. Like when you think about that game, you do not think about the rest at all. They did not have a big moment. One pass interference call. No holdings, nothing. They didn't call a thing. They let the boys play, which I really, really respect. As a fan, did I want 15 yards? Yeah, we were yelling for it, begging. That's when Larry got fired up. He was saying, you're blind, wake up. (laughs) Fan base is booing everybody. But they end up scoring. And then this was the luckiest thing of the whole experience. You, when you hear Alabama wins it, you're like, oh, no. Like the coin toss. You're like, oh, no, we got to go on. A, well, I guess then the – I should not get ahead of myself. Then they still have the minute left. And I'm like, I'm nervous because their kicker can hit a 60-yarder. Confident of that. They need to sniff midfield to win the game on a kickoff. I thought for sure we were getting a walk-off kick from Reich Bart in the Rose Bowl. But – Credit to number 12, had a huge game. Josh Wallace, the transfer from UMass, makes that tackle open field on third down, like four yards before the sticks. Set, open set field, the, perfect tackle. You had to get rid of it soon. Playing a little soft they had to, coverage. So they had to punt. They couldn't even think about going for it. It was too risky. Um, obviously, that happened with Thaw. Happened. We talked about that. Um, overtime. Alabama wins the toss. Was like, oh, no. They're going on uh, defense. But then the gift from the gods – Mike Sanders still, we want to play in that end zone. Coming right into Grant and Larry's lap. Like, oh, my God. Could you imagine if overtime was on the other end zone? I wouldn't be able to see a thing. I'd have no idea really what was going on. They walk into our end zone in the Michigan student section, the band, that side of the field is just going bananas. And I will say this. It's definitely the right move to play defense. But in that situation, considering Michigan scored so fast, was it was such over. an advantage to put the pressure and the avalanche of that crowd and the pressure on Milrow to score and answer after Dude, the core run. You went, that place was you went two plays to score. Like, it was that fast. It, it was game over right away. Yeah, I knew there was no way Alabama was going to hold off that momentum and score a touchdown. Well, no, no. That's a little – Anybody that's watching little, was like, holy <laughs> shit, there's no way. It's over. No, Milro was still electric from 25 yards out. I thought I for sure they'd score. I had no. I thought we were getting a two-point conversion off in the Rose Bowl. I was thinking two-point conversion, and I was going to peep no. that that is how the Rose this, Bowl The was way Michigan designed. just like – they had already gained all the momentum by tying the game, and then they lose the coin toss. I'm like, oh, maybe Alabama could still win. And then Michigan just pounds it down their third two plays in a row, touchdown. I was like, holy fuck. The, the, the wheels are off. That died. Uh, that run, Corum, that was old Corum. That was like pre-ACL Corum. That was disgusting amount of jump cuts and like foul his blockers. Like he just, when we compare him to other running backs and Donovan Edwards, his Donovan vision Edwards is what is makes ass. him who he is. The fact. <laughs> dude, he <laughs> sucks. I can't believe we thought he oh, was good. Oh, the Don. Dude, he's Dude, he's <laughs> dropped the pass too. He is not good. No, go pro. dude, no one, no one wants go pro. him. Dude, I'm telling you, he's not good. I wa- I've watched him all year. He is not good. He'll probably have like three touchdowns in the national championship game, but like, dude, he's not yeah. very good. Blake Corum's 20 times. Um, he, Blake Corum's the best running back. In yeah, I think he is. Like, I actually like him. And like, going person. back to that, yeah, yeah, the HBO doc, I was just thinking like, this kid's childhood the kid is like, gritty as hell. So I respect him. And that's like, we just, he has missed so many big games. He, Played it in his uh, like true first Ohio State game this year. Gets to play in his first playoff game this year because he's not injured anymore. Like great moment for him. And then um, the I, the defensive series. All I really can like focus on is my. I said it out loud when they got the first down on the nine yard line. I said this is tough because first and goal from the nine is not easy to do. About the same. Like thing. that's a that's yeah. a mile, mile, and Mason Graham blowing up that play on second down was such a huge, huge play that they didn't get more positive yards. And then they have to pass to Burton. Um, he gets hurt. He pulls his hamstring. That was a tough tackle, too. That was like at the two-yard line. And I was like, are we going to tackle this guy? No, or is he going to fall? Was never, it, he was, we've never looked close. Alex, you got to think in yeah, I'm watching on every TV, single though, moment. I was like, he's on the score. Observer. I was like, oh, he's not even close. I put my hood up my, uh, when oh, my after big, you guys score. I was like, this game is over. <laughs> like, it's so, and I am not that wow. person. I it took like, you yeah, to that level. Over. <laughs> You're like, like oh, no. that's when it set in for me. Um, so then thinking this through, oh, this is my big pop. This is when I got the whole section to laugh. I cut the tension in the stadium with a knife with uh, three words. 
So the injury happens to Burton. Then and so that's a huge stoppage. Timeouts. Everyone's waiting. And then Alab- I think either – I don't know who called it first, but Michigan, one of the teams calls a timeout. Alabama. Michigan calls play. a timeout. Play on. So after after Michigan's timeout, second stoppage, everything's quiet. The stadium's not really playing much volume. Like the bands aren't playing. Everyone is just tight and nervous. And I go, oh, the agony. And everyone just starts laughing. Like just <laughs> good comedic relief. I just kept looking at people too, Alabama and Michigan fans. I was like, this is an awesome football game. Like I was just trying to live in the moment. I was like, this football game is awesome. Like this is why sports rock. I was just like talking to myself. Like this is unbelievable that we're sitting here at the Rose Bowl watching like, this in our overtime end zone. Is a superior way to watch sports. Oh, and then they call it next time out. We're sitting there waiting. Runs the play, gets stuffed. It kind of was like a blackout. Um, my takeaway was like I think like a walk off win like that and a defensive stop is cooler than like a field goal kick walk off because like. The this the scene of uh everyone running off the sideline was I've never been at a game where like that's how the team won, um like everyone just starts running on the field because there's no time there's nothing left it was a defensive stop. My one thought that I had immediately was, and I'm sure the broadcast showed it a little bit. Very chippy game, a lot of a lot of trash talking, um no like unnecessary roughnesses or I mean um, unsportsmanlike conducts. But Michigan, some Michigan players, I think Keon Sab was just in the grill of Alabama players on the sideline waving goodbye to them. And I was like, oh, my God, there might be a fight. Like, Michigan fan, like, they just started running, and they I didn't know if they were ever going to stop. I thought they were running to grab the Rose Bowl trophy because I didn't understand why they were running so close to Alabama's bench. They just I think they just didn't running, know what to do. They didn't know what to do, so they just, just running. Just running. And then they just started waving, like, goodbye, and I was like, this is crazy. And then I didn't know, like, the setup of the Rose Bowl. They, the confetti cannons, like, in our end zone, one of the end zones, that just shoots up into the air. Fireworks start going off. And I was just screaming over and just saying to myself, we just won the Rose Bowl. We just won the Rose Bowl. Like, on the bleachers with my hands in the air, like a little boy, just noodle arms. Like, off the we record. just won the Rose Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Happy for you, though. I don't know why that came to me. I didn't want to, like, say – like, some people were like, oh, SEC this, like, Roll Tide what? And I was like, I'm not talking any smack. I'm just like, I cannot believe we just won the Rose Bowl. Like, it was more like we actually won a game like this. We n- never have done it really in my life where we actually are. How big is the letdown going to be if you lose on Monday? I don't know. I think it will be a letdown. I just don't know. I probably will just cope and go watch the Rose Bowl highlights uh, if they lose. I mean, Grant, like, this is – you well, let's just be completely honest with each other here. Michigan's probably never going to have a national championship game like this, where like you you should win. You're favored. You're the guy. You're the you're team. Favored. You're Georgia this year. That's and, you. And I saw no. I saw uh, Portnoy tweeted out. I agree with him. I think this game coming up. Is it should be. Go. I but. <laughs> They're, Washington's good, man. They're it's really hilarious. Good. They're not the team that you wrote off all year. Five point dogs it's to play your team in the I know. game. A team that I did not write. Penix off. versus McCarthy. All the talk. Yeah, I do want to finish with a couple points. Um, it's not going to be a crazy. We're already so long. It's not going to be a big title preview by any means. But um, obviously, with the flight to catch, we didn't stay for like the ceremony. We started leaving. Um, they played like celebrate good times first, and then I'll never forget this. They just start pumping levels by Avicii through the Rose Bowl speakers as we're like about to leave, and people are just like, just I'm high fiving every single person. Like, yes, yes, levels by Avicii just bumping through the Rose Bowl was an all time moment. I will never forget. We get out into the concourse. It's mainly Alabama fans because they're just so pissed. And I always remember these two groups of kids. There was like some kids in their 20s, two guys, Alabama fans. The Southern accents when they're sad are so hilarious. Like, what a joke that was, man. What a freaking joke. Like, <laughs> I'm just like laughing to myself. And then, you know how concession stands put the metal doors down when they lock up? One Alabama kid had a flag draped around his neck. He was just punching the shit out of that and i think like i think he's like i think i just broke my hand i'm so pissed right now we're just <laughs> punching this metal thing so kind of crazy like to see their fan base that low considering all they've won and i do say this like i told my dad going out i was like if we lose we have to be prepared to like have a bad trip home like it's gonna suck but like always taking the beauty that was the rose bowl in that environment I feel I did feel a little bad for Alabama fans, which is 
ridiculous because they've won so yeah, much. They're, they're not but a fan base you need to feel bad for. I kid you not, guys, to get back on those shuttles to get out of the stadium was at least an hour and a half wait of like the most chaotic, ridiculous line of all time. And I was just thinking if I was a Michigan fan standing in that, listening to Alabama fans just talk about how awesome that win was, I would have been so sad. And that's like what my dad and I were talking to people like, oh, I cannot believe you won. And you just see the looks on Alabama fans' faces just like wanting to be anywhere else in the world than in an hour and a half line stand still to get on shuttles to leave this venue. It was, I was like, I, that would be so miserable to do. Yeah. Reminds me of Minnesota. To leave there. Zoo to leave there. Um, but yeah, made it back. Everyone was nice on the way out. Like I said, Alabama fans weren't talking really at all. Um, just chatting up Michigan fans and then made the journey home. Here you are. The funniest thing, the last thing. My dad was like, oh, you don't have to like mention any like really parts of me on the trip. And I was like, well, I got to say like a couple of funny things if they happen. He is just – nothing puts him more in a blender than when someone says go blue to him because he doesn't know what to do back. Um, the backstory is the g- morning of the game, He like we're like walking at 8 a.m. to the subway station. He's like, what do you say back when someone says go blue? And I was like, you just say go blue back. Like they say go blue, you say go blue match just match what they said and he's i was like why he goes i heard someone yesterday like overheard a conversation where a guy said go blue to someone and the guy said yep and the guy that said go blue was like what a weirdo like why wouldn't he just say go what did he back? say back my dad yep like yep or like all right yep <laughs> like yes sir like if you said go blue he was like he was like yes sir or something like that my dad is that guy my dad cannot I, say go blue back. He cannot do it. He feels weird. I, 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 I feel for him because I'm the same guy that like when someone says go green to me, I'm not saying go white. <laughs> like I'd, I feel so, uncomfortable. So you're this guy. I, time and place, I'll say it back. Depends on who it is. Like I don't like it. I don't My like dad. It. It's weird. My dad said he, he prefers MSU. He likes that you at least say something different. He goes, I'll say, oh, I would say go white. No, that's just as weird, I promise. But like – he said, like, so the whole day, people would be like, go blue. He'd be like, yep, all right. And I was like, dude, you're a freak. Like, just say go blue back. I like that he just committed to it, too. He just kept doing it. And then I was, we were walking to the sub. I was like, let's practice. I was like, if I say go blue, I was like, go blue. And he was like, go blue. Like, he couldn't say it with any confidence. And I was like, what is wrong, dude? It's not like it's a swear word. He just couldn't. Get the courage and confidence to say go blue back to somebody. He'd be like, yep. <laughs> All right. All right. All righty. Yepers. Um, yep, we do. My only real thoughts on the the title game is that. To my homeland. I could see it going one. I could see it going one of two ways. Um, sort my purple rain sweatshirt. One. Th- <laughs> <laughs> the one thing we didn't mention is. Uh, a big storyline going into this game is to Evan's point was talking about Michigan dialing up those blitz. Oh, Alex, you mentioned the blitzes and we were talking about the pressures that Michigan gave. It's because the back end secondary Ooh. was clamps. They threw that one deep ball to uh I'm just what? Washington's receivers are just not Alabama's because they're bad they're way better. Oh, I know. I I know. I'm just saying the reason Michigan was able to do what they did on defense is because like when Burton or in, uh, they threw the deep ball to Burton. Will Johnson was just smothering him. And then the one where Rod Moore no, knocked well. it down. And um, Milro couldn't throw a football. So they were just had people. Well. Yeah. So I think I can see the Washington game going different ways. I think obviously the biggest nightmare scenario is like if you let um, Penix. Penix. Is it Penix or Penix? <laughs> Dude, you really <laughs> thought it was Penix? You get? <laughs> Jay Desmond. Well, yeah, uh, Desmond. Believe Penix, with Penix thing energy. That guy says. God, I hope I um, see Desmond this week. If you let Penix say something to him, <laughs> punch him right in the face. If you let if you let Penix get in a rhythm, it could be over because he'll just he will not get out of it. But I've seen them, I've watched them in games where if you can get him off a spot and he misses a few and he's susceptible to throwing some picks because they have to throw so much, that's when you really can pull away or have success against them. It's just like, do you – Texas the secondary is, is bad. It's like – it's debatably not even average. They have a like below average secondary statistically. It's hard to take 
much out from that. The biggest keys to me are one, I saw Washington's running back got hurt. Been the hurt all game. year. Um, he's a really good player, Dylan Johnson. If he can't play and they can't run, I know Washington's okay being one dimensional, but I think if they have like no threat of a run game, it's going to be hard because like you're just going to get blitzes from Michigan and they're going to be able to put more pressure on Penix. I I think Michigan's going to be able to score into the 30s. Like I feel like they can score 30 points against yeah, Washington's Washington. Yeah, Washington's defense isn't very um, good. I know they have, they have athletic players. They have big. They're 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 a physical team. They're not, not like a. Good. They're not like um. I don't know. They, I think they're f- as physical as TCU was. Um, but they're more athletic. They're they're they have better skill players. Way more players. talented TCU. than TCU. Well, T- TCU was really physical last year, which su- surprised me. I was surprised at how physical they ended up being in the game. Um, but I know I'm saying they're not going to be pushovers. They have they won the Joe Moore Award for offensive line. It's really going to come down to can Michigan pressure their offensive line the way the way they did Alabama. And if they can get Penix off his spot, then I think well, they can Washington have some is good. Is that they have won every single way possible this year. So they they can win in any style of football game, and that benefits them. Where, where I don't know if we've seen Michigan have to score like I don't think, forty. I don't think they can. Game. Like have have we? I don't think like that's what Michigan needs to do. But like if it were to get in a high scoring shootout, is like Michigan ready for that? I don't know. That would be like my only thought of like well, I don't that's think how they Washington can Washington win. I mean, they grinded it yeah. out and like punched Oregon in the mouth and then they can score 60 in another game. So like they're just, yeah, they're good at football. They're good football. They're undefeated. They're no joke. Like anybody that overlooks that it's one versus Washington two. is a moron. They're not a bad football team. <laughs> okay. Thanks Alex. <laughs> They've played bad games though. That's a crazy team thing. does on a journey to a title. Typically. But like during the stretch of the year when Michigan was blowing out the bottom dwellers of the Big Ten, like they were sweating out games against yeah, Arizona they just State. put on the it's just, they're, they're just, a, just win it's, games. And, they play Oregon and season. Texas, and I, they look I, sick, I think it'll. So. I like this though. I like the tight turnaround. I think that helps Michigan. I from what I've seen Harbaugh's whole tenure and how he started the Rose Bowl, we do not do well with a break. So I like that they're just back in the lab. Rust is off. Whereas I think Washington having a month off to prepare and get everyone healthy helped them a lot. I'm not saying they won't be ready by any means, but I, I feel more confident as a Michigan fan going into the game on a week's prep as opposed to a month. Because there's something with our program where we just pucker after a month and it just looks It'll bad. It'll be a great clash of styles. Michigan, great defense. Kalen DeBoer, offensive mastermind. Coached at Indiana as an offensive coordinator. He's got some, got some experience against Michigan. Who knows? Interesting. You're going to see that 2020 uh, game brought up a lot. I don't know what happened that game. Absolutely so nothing. We were at the tell. worst. I have, that's not why I brought that yeah, up. Beat I just Michigan for like the first time, I think. They beat Michigan by like 14, and we were four and a half point favorites, which is the same spread now. But Michigan was like, we're about to fire. Kalen DeBoer is a point, good so football it's, coach. It's a completely that's different fine. program. Great football coach. Like very good. But I could see this, this is I crazy. Like, you guys are going to win the national championship. It, beat Kalen DeBoer in Washington, and then he's going to jump ship and become the Michigan head coach when Jimmy goes to the NFL. What a story that is going to be. Are you mad that I just said you're going to win the national championship? Because your your ass told me multiple times when Michigan State was gearing up for their Sweet 16 game that Michigan State would be in the Final Four. So here is me returning the favor. Michigan is going to be the national champion in in, in a week. Less than a week, six days. Six days, Michigan raises the trophy. Your Wolverines. Pretty cool. It's going to be a great be football cool. game. It's going to be a dog fight. It sucks. It starts at 6 30. It's the first time okay. I ever complained about the time being too early. The 7 30 on ESPN. 6 30 here. I like it. You're barely out of work. I feel like just leave early. We're gonna be able to. Said two I think weeks we're gonna be able to run the football. I know Alabama. Sh- Who gives a shit? Uh, my boss probably. It's all season. Barely. Yeah, it is actually. Um, since this was a unique show, I think Dallas Detroit is what it is. We don't really need to dive into it unless anyone really wants to. No. I feel like we 
I tweeted about it a lot because I was pissed off, and I feel like everyone's oh, voiced God, their I'm opinions. Um, my only future outlook is I do believe in the v- v- woo-woo theory that it's going to, as Dan Campbell said, controlled fury. I do think this team's going to play with their hair on fire and want revenge on the entire league. I did tell you. I do Dallas think it's going to help us. All year but you were also wrong, game. Evan. Evan? Right and wrong. Technically, yes, I was wrong. <clears throat> about Hutchinson too. I, so I'm a little maybe. disappointed that Hutch can just all of a sudden show up in a game and then he did a stanky oh, leg on Jimmy Johnson. Like, dude, why can't he do this every game? That was I was watching him. Like, he looks like he's just trying harder today. He faced, he one, he faced a former all pro washed up 38 year old. And the other one, he faced a rookie tackle that isn't ready to play right tackle in the NFL that broke his main muscle on the bottom of his foot. So he sucks. Can't walk. And it helps when we get re- any sort of remote push on the other side so Dak can't escape out to the mm. left, which hopefully when James Houston is back, we can collapse. Because like a lot of times people will just run away from Hutchinson. Often struggled. Defense played well. I mean, obviously the biggest. Not the talking about thing was like CD. Not talking CD about CD could it. do whatever he wanted. Mm. But the Derek Barnes play, Alex, is the black eye of that game. It's the only reason we lost. It's the worst worst tackle attempt in over. professional football history. Yeah. I can't get it over is. that. Uh, how long they let that uh, Decker play go? Thirty I full seconds for like it felt like thirty two full minutes. seconds. I was celebrating for so long. I was in. I was Nash jumping was up and down in a living room in East Lansing yeah. with the boys. I was giggling oh, like a schoolgirl. No way. Then all of a sudden we stopped and we turned and looked and there was a flag and the ref is calling the flag. That guy deserves. Can you get fired from being a ref since it's a part time job? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He should get fired from his actual job, too. <laughs> Look up what he does. Dude, he's a notable scummy ref. I do like that most of the media was like on our side. How could like you not be? About like how bad. Yeah, but Rex, Rex Ryan, shout out Rex Ryan. Yeah, but most of the time, he's like. fucking mad. I was like, yes. <laughs> okay, Alex, most of the time this stuff happens to the Lions, then they just talk about like how the other team played. They didn't talk yeah, I mean, about I mean, this was just came blatant, out victory and like, blatant by the refs. Also, I, I hated the broadcast. I almost watched the broadcast on mute. I almost forced everybody I was with to like watch it on mute because how freaking bias and you know what I want to say, writing from Troy and Joe I didn't think Joe – Joe was defending us at the end of that game heavily. No, his first thing he said was like, well, he didn't report. No, and then he showed the replays and was like. And then the rules guy came out and instantly said, he was like, oh, 70 must have reported. Like, guys, Plus, it's an illegal formation. Idiot. So no matter what, the Lions had two is flags John on Perry, play. whoever the guy is, he's so stupid. He just doesn't That's when I turned the television off. And he's like paid by I didn't even watch the onside yeah. kick. I turned the TV off. Uh, no, the onside kick it. Surreal. Saying, they were saying like 68. Yeah, CD Lamb got it. And then the first thing they said was like, oh, CD Lamb has a night. What a storybook ending. Scott Van Pelt. <laughs> I saw his little thing. Joe and Troy were blowing every single Lions player. The fact that at one point during the game, the one point during the game, this has pissed me off the most. Michael Parson wasn't in, taking a play off, resting on the sideline. Joe Buck and Troy, like, <laughs> agree they're like oh the lions now have a chance a fighting chance to gain yards on this play because michael parson wasn't in <laughs> michael parson's a good player he's not that good where he's on the field we can't no, do anything. negative yards Dude, when he plays so we'll put him in a lot negative yards the only time that so he we'll did when parson's on the field on we had negative and i knew that was gonna yards. happen <laughs> it, w- it was a joke how about that jamo bomb jamo, jamo bomb was electric fact so we'll clamp him and then Parsons would talk fine. crap to Sewell. Sewell would point his face or clap Dude, and I laugh at him. Sewell. And then he would go he's the other a, side with Decker. He's a maniac. Sewell's a maniac. Yeah. Sewell's a dog. Frank Ragnar right now still that is drive our Jared. MVP. And Alex, I said multiple times throughout the game, I never hated a Gibbs pick. Always knew it along. I liked it. I hate you. <laughs> I'm glad you flip-flopped on it because I was right about um, that pick the second and a half. J- Jared's no timeout drive gave me a lot of confidence. I left that game being more confident about our play. I said chances, today, we're even though we lost the NFC Championship game, we can beat anyone but the 49ers. We're going to play road. San Francisco in Levi Stadium. Is that their stadium now? 
Unless they lose and the Packers yeah. win NFC the Championship the game, game, 4 p.m. Fox. Let's look forward against, to the first no. playoff game first. Holy we crap. We have no business losing to the Rams. Grant, you'll be yeah, at the Lions else. game on Sunday. This Sunday, yeah. That kind yeah, of still going? Because we're going to nah, – who cares yeah. about the game now? We're just playing like the starters. Half. You're gonna have to. You have to sit them. I don't know. I think Dan's crazy. Minnesota's not even playing. I think Dan either. Just plays them. Bum rushed by Green Bay. No, but if Dallas and New England, not da- not New England. Holy shit! If Dallas and Philadelphia both lose, technically, if you win, you'll have. Well, the, we have uh, the tiebreaker over Philly, no matter what. I guess we don't have the tiebreaker over no, Dallas, no matter we what. We would be. If they lose, though, we if they if, they, if both yeah, those if teams we lose, win. we're the two. But if but if Dallas loses. If and we when win, we'll have the same record as them when they have the tiebreaker over us. No. They no have, we have the same losses. record right now. If we win. Oh, we had four going. We win that four. game on Saturday. Don't get fucked. We're the two seed. Like, it's already wrapped. Yeah, it was locked in that we were the two seed. At worst, we were going to be the two seed. So that's why it's really upsetting. Would you guys rather play? We're just going to go to Dallas again yeah, in the second round. Packers or Rams? That ass. That's what's going to happen. I, I Honestly, right now, I think I would rather go to Philly. Because of all the bad shit that happens in Dallas every single time we go there, hmm. just the aura of the refs yeah. and like it being Dallas, and I know most NFL games aren't a, rigged, but people are just bad at their jobs might and be do stupid nightmare, shit. Though. Like that's the first thing I'm gonna think of. Philly stinks. Yeah, I think they're just on a bad like they're they have an identity crisis right now. I think there's people a lot of pointing fingers in the locker room. I'd like to. I like Nick to be Sirianni to is getting the much needed karma he deserves. You put up. He's a piece of shit. But the, are there that many players left from the Patricia era? I mean, Decker. You have the old guard, so you have like those six or seven players. I wish there was like fifteen or twenty players left from Patricia, and that we like we go into Philadelphia, and they're all just like Kirby Joseph takes an interception and just hands the ball to Patricia, gets a fifteen yard penalty, but I don't moons care. him. He moons him. Yes. Yeah, he pulls his pants down. <laughs> They hand him a Denny's like menu and be like, "Here you go, fat." <laughs> That'd be sick. All right. On that note, that's episode one forty eight. Cheers to that. Cheers. A week of recaps, and Lions we will have a preview. Lions playoff preview. Alex, oh, what's your New Year's and resolution, Alex? Real quick, hurry up, go. Sports and uh, personal. E- Echo boy. <laughs> sports and personal. You have to do one sports one, and you have to do one. I'm sorry, one. I'm not ready for this. I'll get it next week. Oh my god! Oh my god! You're such a loser. All right, better be good. Lions preview and a national championship. Michigan will be winning the national championship.